So um, basically, uh, the world eater smiles and thanks you for the cake. And uh, Doctor, you are uh, immediately filled with warmth as this godlike being gives you this big toothless grin and then moves off into the universe, destroying everything in its wake happily. I'm wanting that cake. Don't the talk end. to me with sex. <laughs> I want that cake. <laughs> the end. What if that was the like the button line of that bizarre ass episode of Doctor Who? <laughs> I won't eat that cake. <laughs> <laughs> um, hello everybody. Welcome to episode five of TBD RPG. Um, yes, indeed. We are uh, <laughs> I love that the gas mask is sitting up there. Did you guys read the note on the front oh, of the gas yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you my mommy? I just they I left missed it. that. <laughs> the crew yeah. left it for us. They left yeah. it where I'm meant to sit, by the way. Andrew Garfield is in that episode. You bastards. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, Andrew Garfield mm -hmm. is in that episode. Yeah, he's all over it. He's the, the, the kid that kind of runs around with the doctor. Is yeah. that his name? Andrew Gar... Wow. Yeah. No, no, no. Wait, the New York, New York, New York, New York one. one with the pigs. Huh? He's in the New York one, York isn't he? The pigs, isn't he? he? He might. So it's not unusual to see that actor repri like come back okay. and play a different role. It okay. happens mul yeah. Yeah, because Marco so was previously in, in. Well, sorry, Marco's cousin. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Killed. Right. Yes. Um, all right. So uh, before we jump into today's game, uh, two things we're going to talk about uh, just before we get to any announcements. Um, first of all, I just want to acknowledge how blistering warm I am in this outfit. <laughs> it's so um, worth it, though. Yeah. We, we decided to go with it. it. Um, I'm getting a, a, a very good appreciation for what Baker probably went through. Um, but, but he was uh, on the cold streets of London. freezing. That's true. <laughs> he was running around being like, haha, get to wear this scarf. Mm -hmm. That's very true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, before we jump into it then, um, does anybody have any announcements? Anybody want to say anything vulgar or anything irrelevant? Uh, I have permission to say irrelevant? vulgar? Please. Sure, I mean, Sax will probably cut the stream and then file. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're a pirate, oh, wait, that's what you're saying. I'm a pirate, okay. so <laughs> don't tempt me. <laughs> ah, fuck, okay. So, we're good to start here? We're good. Uh, uh, well, Announcement-wise, we're all very sad to hear that Capaldi is moving on. I'm excited to find yeah, out. Let's yeah, let's talk about that really briefly before we jump into the game. I am sad that Capaldi is leaving. I know everyone's showing up for the RPG, but this is big news because... Capaldi announced that this is going to be his last year. And there's been a lot of mixed reactions and feelings, but the, the truth of the matter is, especially this last season of Capaldi, which was brilliant in my mind, um, uh, I'm going to be sad to see him go. Because I felt like this last season of Capaldi was a perfect blend of the first Doctor and the ninth Doctor. I felt like mm. it was uh, sort of like, but also traumatized and kind of, you know, laughing because it hurts kind of like, mm -hmm. I, I really liked, I loved this past season of Capaldi's. It was really, really good. Well, I'm kind yeah. of frustrated because I stayed away from it for a long time mm -hmm. because I heard bad things from About some people. About his return season? Yeah. And then I just finally started watching it a couple of weeks ago because of the show. I felt like I should catch up. Yeah. And then right when I'm into it, he's they announced it. I'm like, yeah. Ah! <laughs> yeah, but of course, this has thrown the gates open to discussions of who the next Doctor is going to be. We're already eager to know. And there's already a huge outcry that it needs to be a woman. And yeah. I've actually and seen... And or Richard Iowati. Yeah, Richard Iowati <laughs> is what I've heard. Yeah. I've also, oh, that I've would also be seen... Isn't that right? Holy How crap. How great would that be? Who? 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 Richard Iowati. Oh, yeah. yeah. My, do my doppelganger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I still my think... My high voice doppelganger. <laughs> So Boy! <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I love that line of like, I like your glasses, they're not for sale. <laughs> <laughs> My Four, favorite. Oh, five. No. Fire! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, real quick. I like the milk line. I've, I've heard I, I that was my drink point? milk and kick, kick ass, ass and, and I, I just finished, finished my milk. <laughs> <laughs> that was my Halloween costume last was year. No way. I will find that and we should tweet that. It's yeah. too real, Roy. Yeah. It's too real. <laughs> okay. Sorry. So to close out the Sorry, discussion. Yep. No, that's okay. To close it out so we can get to the game. Um, I've heard the name. Uh, I, so I would love to see. Uh, first of all, for those of you who may not know, the look of Amy's incarnation of the Doctor is actually based on Emma Thompson. Yeah. Um, which I think would be a brilliant choice for a doctor. I've also yeah. heard uh, some people say um, oh. Judy Dench, which would be amazing. I don't know that that would ever happen, but that would be yeah. amazing. Haley Atwell. Haley Atwell is my yeah. choice. I would oh. love to see Haley Atwell. Who's Haley Atwell? Haley Agent Atwell. Carter. Peggy oh. Carter. Oh, right, right. So Agent Peggy classy. Carter. And, yeah, right? she would be so awesome. I've been on Team so Judy classy. for a while, for like a couple doctors now, but Haley Atwell Haley would be Atwell. sweet if they picked that. He yeah. would say, do as Peggy says. <laughs> 
Uh, I've also heard someone say Idris Elba, but the thing is, I Idris would be good in anything. Oh. Yeah. Like, I'm down for exactly. Idris. Exactly. <laughs> as, as soon as there's a new casting for anything big yeah. in England, people are like, Idris but Elba. It doesn't have to be an Elba. Every time. Yeah. Yeah. That man is awesome. Yeah, yeah. I've loved everything. Cast him in everything. Yeah. yeah. Everything ever. All right. So let's uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's go ahead and give the the uh, the fans of the, uh, the our audience here the the timestamp that this is the this is the moment where the episode finally begins. <laughs> 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 if they noted that on YouTube, they'll time step. Okay, game starts at <laughs> eight minutes into the episode. All right. So we'll go ahead and start off because uh, we left off on oh. one more thing. Oh yes. Oh Sorry. yes. The Sonic Screwdriver. Look please. what I have this week because Gina yes. is a wizard and just had this at home because she made it years ago because she wanted a Sonic because that's what Gina, the craft wizard, does. I that's go. I go. Can I? Should I buy that or can I make it? Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is made out of hot glue. It's she made, she sculpted, the sculpted that sonic it's screwdriver out of hot glue and painted it. Out of hot glue. That's pretty so impressive. So are you happy with the warlock pack that you've made? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever missed much warlock packs, or is this really the one for you? You know, I thought I'd miss my soul, but I, I'm okay. I, on the other hand, <laughs> only have the sonic okay. spork. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Yay! That's, That's amazing. My, the sporks, yeah. I haven't tried to eat cereal and or stab things with mine, but we'll um, find out. Okay. All right, so let's uh, let's get into the episode. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I apologize for anyone who's been enjoying this, but holy hell! <laughs> <laughs> okay, scarf, I'll leave the scarf leave on. The scarf. I'll leave okay. the scarf on. <laughs> um, He's just we, too hot, guys. So <laughs> 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 do we uh, replenish story points? Today? Story points. Everyone's gonna get back four story points. Yes. And I will be rewarding them periodically uh, throughout the game as well. Uh, remember, you get story points for um, uh, role playing your. Uh, your I forget what the the your not your merits but your flaws basically mm -hmm. bad traits um, negative yeah, traits yeah your negative traits um, if you like like I was saying to Duncan earlier in this game if you if you role play uh, any negative traits that you picked up during character creation like insatiable curiosity or bad uh, in Gina's case uh, Finn has a really bad temper I do <laughs> um, uh, if you role play those moments um, they feed story points and they uh, that not they also lead to some pretty interesting encounters so mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> I highly encourage you guys to not forget your uh, bad traits cool because even though yeah. they're detrimental <laughs> they are awesome. Best player. Um, so when we last left off we we had had a, a bit of a, a, a holy shit moment um, uh, you guys uh, had arrived on earth uh, per uh, uh, per Duncan's request, I keep forgetting Cillian, Cillian's name, Cillian Rail. <laughs> um, we had arrived on Earth per Cillian's request because he wanted to go back and see what home looked like in this new alternate universe that you guys have spilled into. The plot has been thickening. Um, it looks like these rifts in space-time are sort of closing themselves. It looks like they're keen to heal themselves. But for some reason, they're not disappearing. The, the thing is, is what you've probably noticed by now, is they heal when you show up, but for the most part, they haven't. They've they're, they've been very consistent mm -hmm. until you show up. Um, so you guys have been investigating that. Upon returning to London, you ran into some old friends. Uh, uh, the word impossible gets thrown around a lot in Doctor Who. Um, uh, you guys stepped out of the TARDIS arriving in present day London just after leaving early 17, the early 1700s in the Caribbean, uh, only to arrive in the streets of London to find uh, Captain Finn, who you just left from like four, four or 500 years ago, um, running towards you accompanied by Roko Kokoko. Um, who was thought to be dead in the vacuum of space as they had been sucked <laughs> out. Into Try oblivion. harder vacuum of space. Yes. <laughs> yes. What a fail. What a fail on, on, on I'm disappointed in you, space. <laughs> um, yeah. Disappointed. Um, so uh, lots of incredible story reveals took place so shortly after that. It was revealed that Roko and their friend Finn have been basically jumping galaxies for 11 years in a sort of hit and run resistance fight against the Time Lords of Gallifrey who apparently have become tyrannical in this universe and who have a secret police called the Temporal Guard that have forbidden all time travel. And they have basically caused a lockdown and any time time travel takes place they are drawn to that moment kind of like the agents in Matrix in the Matrix and are sent to hunt down and exterminate or annihilate or whatever, kill 
everybody who is guilty of the time traveling. Uh, and uh, they have, you, you two have eluded them for over a decade now, which is relative in this, in this game. <laughs> but for 11 <laughs> years, so the incredible adventures. I imagine, I am, what I'm picturing as, uh, as like, if I was a fan, like watching this on TV, I pictured there's probably like a ton of audio plays and, and audio books <laughs> of, of you yeah. and Sam's adventures <laughs> together. Like I totally, yeah. It's like the all, it's like the Sarah Jane adventures, kind of like mm -hmm. off on the side. Yeah, um, there's fanfic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. totally, yeah. totally. For all the yeah. scenarios. Um, we already know that there's probably somebody out there shipping the hell out of these two. Let's just face it. <laughs> I Let's thought it was just a thing. What? It. Is it but not a thing? <laughs> I just assumed from lesson. I, I guess I'm the one shipping. <laughs> 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 told you, told you. Not, you didn't have to go far. Didn't have, I didn't even have to log on to Tumblr to find this. I just like, <laughs> right, right there. Well, um, you did do whatever you want. Ship. I'm just yeah. saying. You captain a ship. That's true. So. <laughs> Uh, ah. Running around the galaxies and together. And I completely ignored super hot tall Jim, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yes, poor Jim. Learned. Poor heartbroken Tom. Yes, you, poor, poor heartbroken Luke Cage Jim. <laughs> Mammal isn't your type. <laughs> uh, so, um, yes, uh, the other thing is, is when you encountered Captain Finn again in this present day, Captain Finn is loaded to the brim with a cable-like cybernetic arm in which she used to shove an entire uh, garbage dumpster or a rubbish bin, I should say. Rubbish bin. A big <laughs> ass metal rubbish bin towards these temporal guards who showed up to annihilate you guys. Yes. There was a fight that ensued. You, you all escaped. Everything was laid bare. That uh, the doctor in this reality is dead. Um, no one knows how, but uh, he was killed and did not regenerate. No one remembers how it happened or when it happened. Only that the information is out there that it did happen. It's just as much of a mi mystery that you guys don't know how it happened. Never, never mind. It's 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 weird that nobody remembers it, but that everybody knows it, mm -hmm. and that's part of the mystery as well. Like, how is that? Because no one seems to know. Um, during this whole process, it was discovered that there was Time Lord DNA being detected on the planet Earth, which, as uh, Gina's character Finn revealed, uh, Earth has been quarantined, so there should be no one here. By the order of Gallifrey and the High uh, the High Council of Gallifrey, no one is from no one extraterrestrials to visit Earth. Specific and time time travel, of course, being forbidden, it's doubly so. And yet, uh, Time Lord was detected here on Earth. There was uh, I I love this because in chat there was a lot of people that just oh my god it's the master oh my god it's the master <laughs> and then oh. uh, no. <laughs> it was not the master. You guys arrived on scene after uh, Roko had a precognition. They saw. Uh, the death of uh, whoever this Time Lord was and, and all of these people getting killed at a cafe. Using that precog that Roko gave you all, um, you basically showed up at this cafe to discover, holy shit, it's you, the doctor. Uh, it's David Tennant, number 10 doctor regeneration. Except it's not, except it is. It is, in fact, the half-human uh, clone that was created during, um, I believe it was the episode was called, uh, it was the Doomsday episode, I believe, when... Uh, Davros was about to detonate the uh, reality bomb and blah, blah, blah. Journey's um, End, maybe? It may have been, it may have, what is it? it? It might have been Journey's End. Oh, I think it was Journey's End. It was Journey's End, yes. It was Journey's okay, End. Uh, it was Journey's End. I think it was a two-parter episode. I think I think uh, one of those was, I could be getting this confused. Whatever. There's, okay, there's. <laughs> there, there, there are a lot of episodes. We there are 19 you. seasons of Doctor <laughs> Who. I probably got that wrong. There's a Stepling stampede going on. There's a Stepling stampede? Hi! Steplings! Yay, welcome! Well it means done. our friend Steph Woodburn Steph has sent, uh, just finished her broadcast and sent everyone over to okay. visit us. Steph Hello! Woodburn. It's yes. salutations! It's a steam Steph, Steph, Steph Woodburn should come back, should, should play uh, Captain Jack. That'd be fun. Get Steph Woodburn here to play Captain Jack. I'm so into Barrowman. this idea! Barrowman! That's exciting! Um, so, um, <laughs> so to wrap it, so you, you managed to uh, encounter this doctor, you also encountered Rose. And a baby. Mm -hmm. There was a child. A name David got dropped before she teleported yeah. away, before she was grabbed by you guys and zapped out of there. Um, you managed to also grab uh, the clone doctor and get him the hell out of there, um, trying to get back to the TARDIS. Um, and then yeah. the doctor and Cillian ran. Because at this point, you had managed to, Leg you had a monster <laughs> roll. Uh, if I remember correctly, you had a monster Leg roll Leg. and you took out the two temporal yes. guards. You stunned them. Yeah. Um, and that is where we pick up. You guys are in the heat of running right We're now. Running down as fast an alley. As you can. What's that? We're running down an alley. Yeah, you guys tore down an alley. Um, 
Yeah, it's a dramatic moment as you guys are tearing down this alleyway, your footsteps slamming heavily into the pavement as you're trying to keep ahead of whatever might be chasing you. Um, as that happens, uh, you guys manage to break through this alleyway out into the streets of London where you see busy cars driving by, um, daily life. No one has any idea of what's going on, of course. Um, it's, a men, it's like a men in black moment where no one has any idea that you're being chased by aliens kind of thing. Um, you guys run out onto the sidewalk, <coughs> um, and as this happens... Um, uh, I need you both to make a, oh, and this is why I need a character sheet in front of me. I'm so used to, okay, let's pull this out. We both have the trait, run for your life. <laughs> oh, that is going to come in oh, handy. That you? is an actual yeah. trait in Doctor Who, yes. And I highly recommend every player take it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. London, I don't have that. This is, is really this what London sounds like? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no. Okay, so I need everyone to make an rock. awareness ingenuity check. Just saying. No. Just awareness. Just sounds mm. like rain, to be honest. Mm. No. Awareness Which is ingenuity lovely, check. especially now. Uh, the difficulty is going to be normal, 12. You just need a 12. So roll, uh, so this is for you too, Cillian. So Cillian and the doctor, I need you to make a, yeah, an ingenuity and awareness check. Difficulty that is 12. Maxed out ingenuity comes in handy a lot. Uh, 20. Okay. Uh, uh, 14. Like, why do I have the doctor roll? You know? Like, why? You're going to um, Usain Bolt for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you both spot him. The moment you get out into the alleyway, they're there. They're there? The, the two temporal guards who you just left on their backs on the pavement. No. They're standing uh, about 20 feet away on the same side of the street as you guys are. And you see them uh, with a few people in front of them. They, they point you out and you hear them shout at you. And one of them shoves a woman aside and levels the gun. <laughs> They are, this is in public, so there are people between you and them. Why won't you die? <laughs> Wait, what is that from? <laughs> Why Austin, won't you die? Austin Powers. Austin Powers, that's right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, England. I'm sorry. You betrayed the homeland. Oh now you can never go home. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, well, our friend Donny has already home. seen to that. Um, all right, oh, so sorry. we are going straight into initiative oh. here. Um, they are going to, I'm going to tell you right now, their intention is to open fire. They want to kill you guys. Right. Uh, is there cover there around us? What's that? Is there cover around us? Yes, there is a lot of people. That no, that's not cover. They, well, it's going to make it harder for them to, to shoot you. <laughs> Operation um, Human Shield. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> the doctor's like, don't worry, I got this. And you start shoving this at people in front of you. Um, yeah, that would cost you some story points. Um, I would think so. Uh, so yeah. there is, there is. I mean, this is busy streets of London. There's Use plenty the of job. cars. There's like parked cars. <laughs> there's plenty of parked cars uh, on the side of the street. Um, there are buildings. There are trash bins. There are, there, I mean, picture like, if, if you want, you can just tell me, because the truth of the matter is, this is a busy sh London street. Yeah. So you're going to see all the things you see, like lamp posts and uh, newsstands and everything. It's just laying out here. So if you want to throw yourself behind cover, it's totally doable. All right. Uh, would that be a doing or a running? Uh, that would be a doing. Um, uh, I would, yeah, I would I think, say... I think that's really the only viable choice right <laughs> now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's also one second, because you actually could... Uh, actually, I think you can do this as a reaction. I think there is a rule that lets you to if they fire first of all if they fire you can react to it to mm -hmm. resist the roll because everything there's no ac in this game so everything is a resisted roll so if they shoot at you it's a roll to dodge um so i would say if you want to attempt to and you've just used your makeshift molotov thing yeah, mm -hmm. I, I probably still um, have more, okay. but that's too risky with so, a huge crowd. Yeah. So yeah. this is this is what will happen. Block is still this is uh, I, I'm that's gonna give this true. since this, this, this is that's our first point, chase like you. firefight scene in the game. I'm gonna go ahead and just give you guys heads up. Um, so when they fire at you, they're gonna it's gonna be a resisted roll to hit you guys. Um, the other thing is it's gonna be very difficult because there's a lot of first of all it's a chase. You guys are moving, and uh, whether you like it or not, you guys have a lot of cover. Now it doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna shoot people. But if they roll poorly, they will. And there's almost nothing you can do to stop that if it's them, if you're trying to get away. Do you know what I mean? Unless you confront them, yeah. really, it's going to be them shooting at your backs as you're running. Yeah. Um, so if you guys stop to take cover, there's very good chance this is going to become a straight up um, 
combat scene. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And they're going to probably pin you guys down. If you run, you'll get your reactions to dodge, and they'll get the difficulty enhanced because of all the chaos and whatnot. Uh, and then it'll be calculating your speed and finding out if they can catch up to you guys or not. Although, uh, also a tip from the DM without use uh, the DM, the GM, whatever you want to call me. Um, uh, just be nice about it. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the one tip I will give you without having to spend a story point is that um, it's not it's not a stretch for me to tell you that assume that they're gonna have that getting away is gonna be tricky because they are just suddenly here right now. Like yeah. the evidence that they just reappeared here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and so take all that into account as you make your, your, your call. The hiding and running choices both involve collateral damage, I'm afraid. Yeah. Uh, but he did say we have an option to confront them. I don't know what we would do exactly. I've got a flintlock. <laughs> Thanks for the reminder. Click, don't worry, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's worked the last couple of times. Yeah, I've now you're in really range. Miraculously, yeah. You're you're little, yeah. Miraculously, fighting the temporal guard. <laughs> Of Gallifrey with Has a worked flint out lock in the 1700s. My and they weren't <laughs> expecting that. Yes, and gunpowder. Yeah. You have it done remarkably well. Yeah. Yeah. It's not with what you no have, it's training. how you use it. Yeah. I'm not going to last. <laughs> oh, no. This is not going to, I'm not going to last. <sighs> okay. God, Only time I, for the first time, yes. I really don't my know. My human what sweat to glands do. are kicking. Normally, up. I go, well, Screw it, I'll just do that one. But I have no idea this time. They are following us. We've got to We've stop got to them from doing that. Dina's into it. I am. I'll yeah. take, the, uh, I'll take yeah. that hint. <laughs> 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 All right, so what are you guys going to do? I, uh, um. I, I, they're just going to teleport after us if we run. But we could try to run to a less full of innocent bystanders area. Yeah. Um, what is there That's like? That's a good idea. Are there empty lots in London? Um, is that a thing? Y yeah. So here this and is there. There. so <laughs> here and there. So if you're gonna do that, I'm gonna make this your doer roll. Okay. If you're gonna try to scan the area to try to find a place to go. You um, know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try and kick in one of the doors in the alleyway, because okay. a back alleyways in London usually a side entrance into whatever building is down that alleyway. I'm going to give that to you. Pretty unanimously. I'm going to give that to you instead of being an ignorant American and assuming I know better than you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to You can get away with anything. the storyteller. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, by I've the way, also in years. the UK, <laughs> by the way, also in the UK, citizens can instantaneously destroy time lords at a blink in the eye. Right, <laughs> yes, that's so a you know. thing. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so, which actually technically is true, because if they cancel Doctor Who, that would be... <gasps> don't even use those words! I can't believe I said that. Why would you say that on the internet? I'm so sorry, I don't know what I just did. I'm it's so sorry. not like they've oh done it a anyway, bunch of times TV before. <laughs> get on with it! Yeah. Alright, so... Uh, you're gonna Seriously, to, let's okay. get on with it. So you guys are going to try to kick in a door? Um, I'm going to try and kick in the door. Alright, so then you guys are going to be doers, um, and, and, and I'm guessing the doctor is going to follow I'm super. on board with this plan, yes. Okay, okay cool. Right. So then... Um, I'm going to need you to, I'm probably going to need you to spend one story point here. Okay. To do, so that, that there is a door available to you. Okay. And then. That uh, makes sense. I won't even, uh, but a, and, a, as a, as a trade-off, I won't let, you don't have to roll to kick them. Oh, so, so I'm in. Yeah, basically I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to let you spending a story point to alter the narrative a little bit. You're going to be like, oh look, a door. Um, and, and then, then uh, I'll let you guys kick that in. Um, it's open. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the doctor the kicking in. So basically, you guys run out into the street. You see these guys. You slam on the brakes, essentially. You turn around. Um, ceiling goes, <laughs> grabs the doctor, and you kick in the door uh, just in time to see uh, a waiter go, and just kind of just jumps back and, like, plates <laughs> spilling everywhere as you kick this door in. You, you just enter the kitchen of a, of a pub. Um, and you guys bolt inside just in time to see these bright green bolts go flying right past you. And then you hear all these screams from outside as people scatter from the gunfire. Um, they scatter. You guys are now inside the kitchen. Um, there are people, <laughs> the cooks in this kitchen, everyone's frozen to see what the hell is going on. Sorry, excuse just us, bit of a rush. <laughs> and you guys tear through the kitchen. Um, you bust out of the, the, uh, the swinging door into this, this pub. It's relatively empty, so it's no problem getting through here. 
And I'm guessing you continue to run? Yes. Okay, you run down through this dark pub, pushing your way very as nicely as possible through a couple of people. Uh, you shove your way through a bouncer who is just checking someone's... Uh, do they do that in the UK? Uh, yes, yes they do. <laughs> shove your way through well, a bouncer. Well, not in a pub, but in a bar. So okay. if it was a bar, they would do that. Oh, if, but it's a pub if here, it was a so pub, yeah, yeah. there wouldn't be one. Okay, he shoves his way past some random person who was in another reality a bouncer, but has been corrected and is now not. <laughs> uh, you guys run out into the street as this guy gets shoved at the side. You're now on the opposite. Uh, you've kind of you basically gone into another corner of the street, so you're a block away on the other side of the block, essentially, of where you just were standing, um, and you're still probably about two and a half blocks away from the TARDIS. Um, uh, I say we run for it, try to call these guys, and keep an eye out for teleporting temporal guards. Sounds good to me, Doctor. <laughs> okay, you continue your bolt. Let's pretend I said all of that in character. And let's <laughs> pretend I'm a little less composed. Than I <laughs> 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 Sounds good to me, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay now. Making Can some we rolls call here. Oh, okay. Communication devices. Miraculous. Ask your Sonic. Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> I guess I still have I'm, that cell phone yeah. that yeah. I used in the 1700s. Oh, it's dead time. now, though, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it's yeah, it's yeah, yeah, you, you batteried that it's thing into oblivion. Uh, it makes you wonder, does the doctor have an, iPod, an I, iPhone port on the TARDIS? Probably not. Because then there'd be a copyright issue, and then the doctor would be sued by Apple. Yeah. I feel like Android. Android? <laughs> 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 Hey, handles. Yeah, Doctor. Would handles plugged android. into the TARDIS. Right. Absolutely. That's an Android, right? Although they keep Ish. needing to be upgraded, and that's really. Mm. Okay. Um, <laughs> they do not the reappear as you guys that. turn the corner and start running again. Fantastic. Um, Y'all dodge uh, a few more people. Um, you kind of. It's cool. You, I'm, I'm, let, me, let me ask you this: Are you are you guys going to be skipping traffic laws? Like, are you are you going to wait for red lights? No. <laughs> Just checking. She's London. I, I just you imagine you guys stop and wait. Don't walk. <laughs> <laughs> I might okay, pause go, go, go. for a moment and you'll be like, no, this is London. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah okay. That just happened. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then I'm going to need you all to make a... Uh, I'm going to need us? you all to make it... Uh, no, no, just the ones that are running. Oh, okay. So this all. is going to be... All. <laughs> Meaning half. Sorry, it's <laughs> meaning, when I say all, I meant two of you. He's yes. texting. The second person plural it's, uh, is very it's true. inflexible. Yeah. We, t we Texans are ridiculously general about everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You got, that got real grim. Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> there was a story behind that up, When I was growing up, if you ordered a Coke, they would say, cool, what kind? Root beer? Huh. Yeah. It's not always that way, but it, it does happen. That's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Coke is a generic Coke is a term thing. for soda. I thought cola Coke was a Coke is just another word for soda. for soda. All right, so I'm going to need you guys not to make a roll Coke. for... In like the um, 50s. Yeah, exactly, though. <laughs> like, if I was like, Coke. When they still had yeah, cocaine. Yeah, cola. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the good old days. But cola. <laughs> this is going to be... <laughs> this is going to be... This is going to be a coordination plus athletics roll. Okay. You guys are running. This is a traffic dodging. This is traffic, traffic dodging. dodging. This is, this is run, and calculate your speed because like you guys role. are running for your Do lives. Do you get hit by a car? <laughs> yeah. Well, well we've got that run for your lives trait. That's what I'm saying. Plus so, one speed. So calculate that into it. Okay. So, uh, so calculate run for your lives as you guys are running through. So um, just plus one speed means to add to whatever we're rolling right now. Yeah, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you a plus one to this. Well, no, the plus one speed doesn't add to the rolling. This is to give. This is whatever you roll. Tell me the outcome, and then you're gonna get a plus one to whatever speed factor that gives you. So okay. just go ahead and tell me right. what you roll. Oh, excellent. Uh, so I got yeah. uh, seven, eight, twelve. So it's our roll plus athletics and what? It's 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 gonna be coordination plus athletics. Okay. Twelve. Okay, cool. You guys. Yeah, are fine. Nice. You guys actually are making it through. That's I mean plus yeah. So it's not that it's not that tricky because. Okay. Even though the streets of London are quite busy and people do jump in front of traffic sometimes, there's a lot of traffic, so there's not too many cars moving fast to have to dodge here. Um, and I've been doing this my whole life. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, it's just another day. Yeah. Um, with a plus one to speed, I'm going to say y'all are about a block away from the TARDIS at this point, okay. and it Sweet. seems like you've lost them. Let's find out if that is true. <laughs> oh, God. They rolled the, the exact same thing. The running. Mm -hmm. the running. I love the running. <laughs> running. Love the running. Running. <laughs> I keep waiting for there to be a track star on Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that'd be so. I'm good. sorry. You guys rolled twelves. Two twelves. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. What? Um, <laughs> they have. They, they have not. Right in front of you. They have not managed to locate you just yet. Ah. That's good. Um. And you guys. Okay. So then I'll need you guys to make one more coordination athletics roll. Get it. Still with the plus one. Yeah, y'all are running for your lives, I'm guessing. Okay. Um, but it means he upgrades our six. 
What's that? Ooh. 12 again. 12 again? Yeah. Okay. 17. <laughs> the oh, doctor nice. is very motivated. Yeah. yeah. Wow, you guys are... Wow. <laughs> Okay. We beat Hasty <laughs> Retreat and well, got away. Um, yeah, you guys actually, they rolled complete shite. Yay! So you guys actually managed to get back to the TARDIS without getting located. Sweet. Um, you guys run around a corner. You see that familiar alleyway. You bolt towards it. Both of you terribly out of breath at this point, even though y'all are both <laughs> very used to running like crazy. And as you turn the corner, you Why see... Why are you used to running like crazy? I'm going to say, I'm getting used to running like <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You probably we still don't know much about your crazy. former life. I'm just yeah. curious. So as you all run around this corner, you see the familiar sights of a blaster-stricken uh, rubbish bin that has been shoved down the alley. Skip. Uh, what is Those it? big ones? Oh, yeah. they're it's called, called skip. A skip. Nice. Skip? Okay, mm -hmm. you see a skip. It's got all the blaster marks, the Gallifreyan. There's no, uh, there's no evidence that the, uh, the temporal guard have arrived. Uh, what you do see is at the end of the alley is a TARDIS. You see Roko. You see uh, Roko, you see Finn, you see the clone, Ten, with Rose and the baby, Hell surrounded yeah. by men in black uniforms and ski masks and bulletproof vests with assault rifles, and both Finn and Roko have their hands up, along with the Ten clone. No. Um, and is this Rose, is, Rose is holding the baby. Um, uh, you see they all turn and look at you two as you enter the alleyway, and you hear them, Halt! Freeze right there! Don't move! Do I recognize these uniforms? You could make a roll if you want to attempt to. They don't seem to have anything identifying on them. Mm. But go ahead and make a roll. It's going to be ingenuity and awareness. Or no, you know what? This would actually be, because you actually have some, this would be knowledge. So ingenuity and knowledge. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> I got this. <laughs> it's a base 15. Uh, mm -hmm. Plus 9. 24. Unit. I thought that might be... These are unit. I'm trying to remember the history of this parallel Earth. Rose went to work for Torchwood. All sorts of weird stuff happened in this parallel universe. Yeah. Um, the, I mean, the UK itself is supposed to not be the original... Like, it's not... Like, it's the... What I believe it's the United Republic of the... Or the United... Uh, the Republic of the United Kingdom, and they had a president that was apparently <laughs> killed by Cybermen or something. Like, there yeah. was a whole bit of weirdness. Many things have happened. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so it's hard to tell. It's unit for sure, but you don't know whose side they're on. Yeah. And they clearly don't recognize you. Right. Um, mm. And you hear, you hear the clone go, look, if anyone wants to tell me what's going on, that'd be all right. That'd be really great. Yes, what? Maybe, maybe if we could just talk for a minute. Do you know who Talking these people are? Talking sounds like a good idea. Ah, oh, they're, they're, they look like they're members of UNIT, but I don't Rose, know who's side they're on. Where's What's the doctor? Unit? <coughs> Where's the doctor? And then the ten says, yeah, it'd be nice to uh, say hello to him. Found his car and all. He kind of thumbs back to the TARDIS. No sign of him. Ah. Uh, you see one of, the, them one of the one of the men. Are they far away? What's that? Are we hearing them? The unit knows. You guys, you guys are about twenty feet away from yeah. each other. Yeah. yeah. Has unit seen them? They have, right? Because they said stop. Yeah. Yeah. They they're in okay. the, they're in the mouth. You guys got about ten feet into the alleyway when you kind of like had that cartoony slam on the brakes, like. Whoa. Yeah. I'll explain. What we do? I'm not betraying any recognition. Yeah, okay. I'm waiting to see what moves they want to make. Yeah, because you have no idea who the hell these people are. Mm -hmm. Actually, Finn, I don't think you would know who Unit was either. Mm -mm. Earth has been quarantined. This is the one on place Earth. you haven't been to, yeah. What's a Unit? I'll, I'll explain in a moment. You hear okay. one of them go, Oi. And he steps forward and lowers his gun and stares for a second. And you hear him say, Syrian? And he, Mickey? he takes off his, <gasps> his ski mask, and you see Mickey <gasps> looking at you like in complete shock and goes, What the hell are you doing here? How are you alive? What? Is this a trick? Why would I not be alive? You see Mickey? Rose go, Mickey? And te the, the clone goes, What? Again, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> like everyone is so completely baffled by this, and says, Mickey, who's the girl? How how do you know these people? 
Who? We need to make sure everyone is who they say they are. Maybe we can All make right, sure what? without the guns. Yeah, that I, would be delightful. I know who I am, so do you mind if I put my hands down? My yeah. arm kind of hurts. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's when Rose says, steps forward and says, Mickey, it's us. What are you doing? What is this? What's happening? And Mickey says, lower your guns, lower your guns. I think they're all right. And everyone, uh, the unit, all of them, they <coughs> immediately lower their guns and start pointing them at each other. Well, that was Hello. a bit dramatic. Mickey, what is going on? I was going to ask you that. Last why, why are you holding a, a gun? Why, what, it, what is this? Who are these people? He looks around and says, we're a unit. And you see the con go, oh, well, thank you for the warm welcome. By the way, none of y'all recognize me. He kind of, of course we recognize you, Mickey turns around and says to him. We've been watching you for years. We need to make sure everyone is who they say they are, though. And at about that point, you hear the sounds of a helicopter in the distance. Now, what's that, then? That's back up. That's with you. That's with oh, us. Thank God. Um, you also see a car pulling up at the end of the alleyway. And he kind of looks down the alleyway and says, hold on. Gets on a remote and says, what's the status of the other Time Lords? No sign of them, sir. You hear through the intercom and says, other Time Lords? Right. TGs. The TGs? TGs? The ones we've we been running from. running from. Oh. <laughs> oh. Did you forget Why about the thing that we're trying Italian. to kill off? I'm having a very hard time <laughs> processing all of this. <laughs> I hope you can understand. We'll need to secure the doctor's TARDIS. Which one of you is the doctor? Well, um, well you see the clone. Me. The clone just says, <laughs> I guess that's me. Hmm. But I didn't come here in this. And then Mickey looks a little confused. Everyone, th this seems to be a general air of like, we need to get this sorted before we move. Are Where's you all the friends doctor? of the doctor? What was that? Are you all friends of the doctor then? We were, yes. Mickey, long time. What? 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 <laughs> you hear like, a, a <laughs> everyone's like, you can't be serious. New face. Same deal. Not your first time at this then. Uh, you see the tin clone go, oh, this is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and Rose is just stuck, like, sh like has no idea. It looks like she's trying to process. Um, Mickey says, that can't that can't be, you're dead. It's a long story. If you're the doctor, then you'll have access to the TARDIS. And you see him, you see him slide the rifle back into, the, into, his, into his arm, like he's gonna brace it, and he says, show me. Everyone sort of parts ways. Hmm. If you're our Mickey, Then you'll recognize a bit of this. All right, so what are you? Uh, I'm we're just hoping these, this isn't it's some evil clone of Mickey and that we can trust <laughs> unit. Uh, yeah. Uh, gamble, so, gamble. So how do we go about, how do we go about proving to you people that we are who we say we are? Yeah, he, Mickey's, he, Mickey's waiting for the doctor to open the TARDIS to see if it's really the doctor. Because only the doctor is going to have access to the TARDIS unless the doctor is given access to somebody, you know. Right. You are who you say you are. Open the TARDIS. Is there a way to open the TARDIS that prevents other people from going in, or is it just unlocked? Don't worry, I'm unlocked. in front of the door. Well, <laughs> so the <laughs> TARDIS the is the TARDIS is <laughs> the TARDIS. Yeah, uh, they ask you to put your arms up. Yes, <laughs> that's number one. <laughs> All I have to do is limbo them as they go under. Yeah. <laughs> On many occasions, the TARDIS has that will respond to the Doctor. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so it's entirely conceivable. Remember, and you have story points. Yes. Yeah. So it's. Anybody else hearing that? Yep. <laughs> what am are I we, hearing? Are we about to start <laughs> meditating? <laughs> <laughs> when all of a sudden this became like Tardis, a sexy you're commercial. you're speaking up in a weird um, way. Uh, <laughs> uh, you open the Tardis, so a weird voice comes from inside. Basically, what you could do is you could just get those doors to open, yeah. and if somebody tries to enter and you don't. Yeah. Get those doors to close kind of thing. That's um, the plan. But this is one of those things where you I can say, I'm going to burn a story point. No, they can't go in without me. You know what I mean? 
I'm going to burn a story point to say that I have a way of opening it that I've set up that sort of, like, close on command. Hmm? Would that be one or two? Uh, yeah, okay. I'll give you, yeah. For mm-hmm. one story point, I'll give that. Okay. So Mickey waits. Everyone's waiting with a bated breath. Rose is staring at you. Um, the I'm going to point behind me, but noisy. stare at Rose. What's that? Okay, you just point behind Ooh. and you stare at Rose. She... <laughs> She, when the doors of that TARDIS swing open and everyone looks, she does it. She just keeps staring at you. It's good to see Ooh. you, Rose. The, the, she, you, she's, her mouth is kind of just hanging open, like, uh, Hello, Rose Tyler. Uh, and then you hear the baby start, start making a little bit noise, and she starts kind of, like, cradling him a little bit. Who and, is this? <gasps> the sapling's making noise! <laughs> <laughs> she says, David. This is David. It's a good name. Uh, and you see the tin clone go, yeah, I thought so. <laughs> I'll shake his hand. John Smith, he shakes your hand. Had to pick a name, you know. Can't what? Just, I had to pick a name, John Smith. He shakes your hand. Couldn't just be the doctor here on Earth, you know. It's a, it's a good one. Now, I was wondering when this was going to happen. Where are you from exactly? Because Mickey's right. The doctor in this universe is dead. I, I'm, I'm from where you're from, actually. It's, it's a bit of a long story. Uh, Wait, so you're the one who dropped us off here? It has been a while, but yes. Hmm? Rose is completely, go- like, she's completely silent just watching all of this. Mm. Mickey steps forward and says, Well, we can transport the TARDIS by the helicopter, but I know you don't like that, Doctor, so <laughs> you would like to step in. Or, and I can show you where the unit's headquarters are. I think there's a few people that would like to meet you. Sounds fantastic. There's a, a definitely not any Californian temporal guards where I'm from. I hope you'll be able Is to that explain a bit called? of that. We don't have an official name for them yet. But they have been making their rounds here on Earth. We've been following them. Call them TGs. They don't seem to like it. Right. Mickey, this is Finn. And this is Roka Kokoko. You tip your, <laughs> yeah, this metal arm. I ju- yeah, the metal, I just, two metal fingers. <laughs> well, I should get you back to unit headquarters then. Men, they call, all stand at attention and then you see them uh, immediately start filing down to the end of the alley where there's that van waiting, a car that's just pulled up. It's, we'll say it's an SUV, has pulled up, so it's really spooky. But they all start filing out and Mickey says, after you. Can we bring the sapling? It's so cute. Well, we can't leave them here. Are you all right? To Rose and John. Uh, Rose goes, <laughs> yeah, that's one word for it. <laughs> and uh, Ten goes, uh, John Smith, he just, John just says, I'm, it's been a while. It's nice to feel like this again. And you see she immediately gets like, he immediately gets this like critical look from Rose. And he goes, not that I would do it again, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see the old girl. And he pats the TARDIS. Um, and uh, Mickey says, right, well, we can't linger here. We have to move out. Come on, Mickey. Yeah, you would say that, Mickey. He, I have a lot of questions about this, he, by the way. He gives you this kind of, like, this look. Like, clearly he has an idea of what you're referencing, and he, he says, yeah, we'll, we'll talk. And um, let's go. And as he steps in, as he says, let's go, uh, John, John just goes, look at you, sounding all authoritative, <laughs> and pats him on the back. He says, I don't know you, get off me. And then they, everyone starts to file into the TARDIS. Um, the doors close behind everybody as y'all approach the control panel. Um, and as y'all approach, y'all stop for a second, and Mickey turns and says, sorry, did you say Roco was your name? Roca Cococo. Nice to meet you. Please don't point a gun at me again. No, I, I don't think I should. Well, Thank I agree. You. Much obliged. <laughs> and you see both Tim, John Smith, I should just start referring to him as John. <laughs> John and the doctor are both kind of, it's sort of instinctual doctor as y'all approach the control panels and, and uh, Mickey approaches the control panel as well to sort of give you the idea of where the unit base. But there's this instinctive, like disapproving glare at the assault rifle in his hand. Um, and... Uh, Mickey says, here are the coordinates, and he just immediately punches them in on the uh, data pad on the TARDIS control panel, and then looks at says, what? Oh, 
<laughs> and he points it down and clicks the safety on. Thank you. Slings it over his back. And you, the TARDIS, you, the TARDIS is ready to go. You just hear the <laughs> come up on the screen. You see the headquarters, Tower of London. Um, Tower of London? Which Mickey is this? Just, and I, okay. Um, <laughs> Question of the day. It's just occurred to me. I, I, I recognize him, but I. Um, if you want to make a knowledge ingenuity check. Yes. Real quick, go ahead, and, and we can see what the doctor's doing, putting all the pieces together of what's going on. Yeah. Hmm? Fifteen plus eight, twenty-three. Um, so this is definitely that alternate reality that you parted with them in Bad Wolf Bay. Yeah. Um. But there are a lot of things that aren't adding up. Um, there's a lot of continuity errors that seem to be taking <laughs> place in this reality. And it doesn't look like, it doesn't look, there's a lot of things that are basically not, you're, you're hearing echoes of your 12th regeneration from the prime, the prime universe. Um, Something about that splash effect. You're wondering if all of the realities have been affected, but something about the time-space continuum has made it. There's just there's a lot of things that aren't adding up here. Yeah, it all plays out differently. It's almost like it's responding to its a, com a complete. <laughs> I can already hear the audience going, "Yeah, way to get out of this, Eric." Yeah. But the truth <laughs> of the matter is, is this reality is responding to a completely di different style of narrative. <laughs> Basically, there's the um. There, there's just a lot of things that you've encountered so far that 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 are leading a lot of open questions about how this happened. All right. And how the other doctor is dead, and exactly why the other doctor didn't, like, and how long it's happened, because the other doctor was never even, like, that was something that's <coughs> never come up. And even if this clone has acknowledged, John Smith has acknowledged that the doctor in this reality is dead, like, how does he know that? Um, you know, yeah. lots of open-ended questions here. Yep, okay. So, um, so you're not, to, to, to answer the big question that you were asking about Mickey, um, your instinct tells you that he's on the level. But it's that sort of, it's that typical unit, that typical, yeah, I know you guys are trying to do good, but kind of unit thing. Yeah. That you, you applaud the effort, but for God's sake, could you stop being so damn human about everything? Mm -hmm. um, so um, as the worrying machine of the TARDIS goes, you're kind of scrutinizing him. Um, Rose hasn't said a word. But what you do notice is the baby who's getting upset the moment the, that whirring noise of the TARDIS starts up, uh, little David gets quiet. Woo! It's a happy sapling. Um, I know, there's, there's a happy and noise. And the grinding <laughs> noise and the grinding noise. And you see John just look up and says, I really like what you've done with the place. Thank you. We always did have good taste, though. A bit, I yeah. Thought. Have you noticed that we never get enough round things, though? Have you noticed that? Oh, it seems like every single time we create a new one, we never get enough round things in here. Could I'm sure you'll more. get around to it. Ah, ah, <laughs> 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 yes, that's, that's a human joke. I, I learned that from Finn. <laughs> that's um, funny. You hear the <laughs> as the TARDIS stops. Um, and Mickey goes, All right, we've arrived. Where are we then? Unit headquarters, though. I should tell you the coordinates took us outside since we can actually prevent the TARDIS from appearing inside. Yeah. Yeah. Asshole. Unit. <laughs> um, you, <laughs> he walks over to the doors and opens them up as you all kind of like, I'm guessing y'all are following mm -hmm. soon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, everyone kind of lines up and starts following. Uh, as he opens those doors, you guys see you are in a, uh, it looks like an antechamber sort of hallway, maybe underground. It's an entrance point that maybe that they built for things to materialize in, so to speak, that's just outside of the purview of this blockage that the TARDIS can't get through. Um, and you see a bunch of scientists and doctors and whatnot in this room with a lot of research material, but it all looks very like equipment that's been moved off to the side. It's almost like a miniature aircraft hangar. You could probably store a plane or two in here. Um, you're guessing you're underground, there's no windows. Um, but you do see a lot of people lining up as the TARDIS has appeared here. Um, and uh, Mickey steps out, and you see a bunch of people salute him. Actually, it's English, so would it be like this? Sort of like the straightforward yeah. salute? Um, uh, I'm just, my, my, my father in real life is Air Force, so I'm used to, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. so. Uh, Can I see if I recognize any <coughs> of 
the equipment yeah. for science-y. Absolutely. Go ahead yes. and make an ingenuity and uh, awareness check. Or no, this would be knowledge. I'm sorry. Ingenuity and knowledge. Um, would this be like a knowledge alien, alien cultures because it's like an alien artifact? I'll give you the bonus. Yeah. Because you're, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, ten I like that six. smile. Yeah. <laughs> plus five, 21. Yay! Bloody hell. <laughs> um, so there's nothing overtly alien about this technology. It looks like this is probably where, um, it, in fact, all of it looks surprisingly mundane for you, Nick. Um, really? You don't really notice anything particularly, actually, wait a minute. I've never been on Earth. As you're looking at it a little closer, some of this technology actually looks a little outdated for unit. Hmm. Like it doesn't, like you're not even sure some of this tech does anything. As you're staring at it, you're like, Pretty sure that's a broken cat skin, like, like a like a yeah. or what are they called? The um, the devices for cat skin, the M MRI machines and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Basically, you okay. see, yeah. you, it looks like old medical tech that probably isn't in use anymore, hmm. but it's labeled with an um, uh, with a levels of importance, and you see people milling about it. Hmm. This, this well, tech doesn't look like anything like my notes. Device. It's a bit under the normal unit standard. Uh, we should probably pretend that I answered your question and briefed you on what unit is on the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're a bit yeah, of an Earth Defense Force. They get a bit happy about their guns. But Have you ever watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? It's kind of like that. <laughs> 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 your character's a bit of a nerd. You might have watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I might have played Earth Defense Force. <laughs> <laughs> but which yeah. unit are they? Are they like a light year? Are they, are they <laughs> a pound? Understand. Which I heard about are Mickey's. Are a kilometer? Like, I don't... Yeah. Um... Yeah, you get a lot of snaps to salutes. You see an elevator door open and a lot of people spilling out into it. Um, one person steps forward and says, Sir, this man dressed in a suit um, approaches Mickey and salutes him and says, We need to see the director immediately. And the man salutes back and looks over at the TARDIS and is just in awe and says, Sir, is that... Is, is that... And Mickey just says, Yes. Is the doctor I here? lock it over my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, not that it's not always locked, but for dramatic effect, okay, I lock it over. As it closes, the man says, my God, doctor. And he approaches John. And John goes, nope, sorry. Not this time. <laughs> I'm just a bystander. <laughs> Smiles. Um, and then um, you hear murmurs coming out of the baby again. And he immediately drops that sort of whimsical attitude and goes, oh, 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 oh. oh. And he goes over to Rose. And Rose is just watching all of this, and the two, the, the three of them sort of like huddle around the baby for a moment. Um, and, and the man says, I'm sorry, I don't understand. And, and Mickey says, take us to the director. He says, yes, yes, sir. And uh, it starts leading you guys up. You step into the elevator. Everyone files in. Um, the elevator starts going, you assume, up. Uh, when you comes to a stop, uh, after a few moments, the door opens, and you see units HQ. The tech here, immediately, Roko, I'll tell you, the tech here is definitely advanced. This is beyond human technological, uh, this is way beyond the human technological grade. Uh, you definitely spot some alien tech in here. Um, some of it looks like it's dangerous. Um, doctor, you've seen this kind of tech before. You know that UNIT has, on occasion, tried to absorb alien technologies from races that are vastly outside the purview of human understanding and therefore risk their own lives. But to their credit, UNIT has minimized the risk factor in using some of these alien tech, but you, I mean, you, and you can tell from just looking at John, like there's a, there's a distinct disapproval. Again, every time you enter this place, um, you do, however, see on the wall in an image of a very prestigious looking man with the plaque underneath it um, that reads uh, Brigadier Alastair Gordon Lethbridge Stewart. Uh, and uh, you see that old familiar face. That man who helped you, you two were thick as thieves for a long time. Um, all the adventures, all the memories come flooding back as you look at that, that stern but sort of whimsical man <laughs> on the wall. Um, Mickey says, this way the director's gonna wanna see you as quickly as possible. Nod to the portrait. <laughs> <laughs> um, Y'all file in through, and uh, you come to what looks like a, a platform area where there's like stairs going up and you see what looks like a CIC, a command table with readouts and stuff like that. And as you're approaching, you hear the unmistakable voice of Master. 
and everyone kind of turns and looks as you see a robotic dog about <laughs> this tall as it starts wheeling towards you guy. It's the master. And you hear him coming, hello master, as K9 wheels right up to you. And you see John go, K9! And without even thinking, doctor, it comes out of your mouth at the exact same moment. Yeah. <laughs> and you see K9 go, hello again, master. It's good to see you. Is K9 talking to me or to John? You're not really sure. I mean, it's kind of like, it, kind of John ish. <laughs> But you see K9 kind of wheeling back and forth, doing the excitement that K9 yeah. is capable of doing, where he's kind of like. Um, yeah, I'm not even thinking. I'm just done. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and who are you? Please identify. K9. Hello, Master. Uh, it is good to see you, Master. It's so and good to see you. You see reactions of everybody as K9 identifies you, um, and you see John laugh and goes, "He." Oh, K9, always new, always new. <laughs> um, but then when, he said, when you see John say, well, but wait a minute, if you're here, and then you hear a woman's voice say, hello again. <laughs> <laughs> and Mickey, everyone turns around and says, may I present to you the director of unit? And you see Sarah Jane <laughs> standing on top of the platform. All right, I guess everyone just knows everyone. <laughs> um, it seems. Yeah. And you see Rose go, oh, no way. <laughs> this is getting to be a bit much. <laughs> and John kind of gives her a look and goes, you've been the director of unit the whole time and you've never reached out to me, not even for tea. And uh, Sarah Jane says, we've had our hands a bit busy, doctor. Or should I say, and she looks at you, doctor. A pleasure to see you again. She... You see this, that, that, that smile that you ha are so familiar with that she approaches you and she looks at you, she looks at the hand and then she looks at you again and then she wraps her arms around you. <laughs> and the two of you embrace. <gasps> the and director of you, hey, that's good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> um, and she steps back and she goes, I love your hair. Well, thank you. <laughs> it's quite nice. Oh my gosh, they're just gonna gab the whole episode. Yeah. I love this. Goodness. What's she wearing? Is um, it like she is in? She is in. <laughs> I want to compliment it. She's in a black suit. She's in like the power suit, sort of. She almost is dressed. Yeah. Um, uh, she's totally yeah. She's united it up, mm -hmm. and you see her. She is in full regalia. Yeah. Um, and K nine, of course, is going back and forth. Um, you see, uh, to her credit, she is actually keeping her composure. But you see, tears are welling up in her eyes as she spots both you and John Smith. Um, it's kind of like. Reunion overload here. Um, uh, she's, of which she addresses, she says, My, what an unusual day this has been. I have so many questions. We have all so many questions. Um, even know where to begin. Where are you from? You, the doctor of this universe is dead. And yes, we're a bit curious about that, actually. What happened? Well, I'll need to, to brief all of you. Um, but first, I'll need to know who your friends are. Your new companions? A few new friends, yes. Well, um, Director you might Jane. be interested... Oh, um, Cillian Rail, nice to meet you. Uh, you might be interested to know that uh, your man Mickey back there, he's my cousin. Really? That's fantastic. And I think oh. I've finally figured out how the hell I ended up mixed up in all of this. I think it's his fault. Oh, Mickey. <laughs> Can do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> forgive me Family for being, first, yeah. right? Forgive Mickey. me for being rude, but you're not registering as human. Oh, hello. I'm Rogu Coco. Uh, this, is, this is the part where, where you, you shake, right? I think Correct. Yes. Well done, well done. Hello. Your hand says, hello. It's a pleasure to meet you. Are we familiar with your species, well, if you don't mind my asking? I, I shouldn't imagine so. Um, I'm an Ovo Collie. Is, is it okay? Only, we're welcome here. It's getting a bit pinchy around the, the flesh bits. Uh, if you're with the Doctor, then you're a friend. Okay, 
that's good. And and I want to shape shift. Yeah. You just see the shape shifting right in front of you as Roko just goes right back into their original form. I just shake like a dog. Yeah, he's gonna <laughs> shake it off. I appreciate that fifth element scene where he just <laughs> shakes off the shape shift basically. Yeah. Well, and you two see, days um, ago that would have probably <laughs> terrified me, but. That was really cool. Yes, <laughs> that was really yeah. cool. I, I, yes, I came up with this in my research. They're all stigmas against um, gingers. <laughs> I understand that would be terrifying. I, I intended for an intimidating visage. Did I do it? You did great. I think you did quite well. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Lovely job, bro. <laughs> um, you, you see, Smith says, "I'm sorry, Sarah. Sarah Jane, where is Kate Stewart?" I thought she was head of unit. And uh, Sarah says, we believe she's dead. Curiously enough, we don't know how. What does that mean? That's a theme. It means whatever happened to the former director of unit is likely the same thing that happened to the doctor that we know. It is a theme. <laughs> Which... Which character did you say this was? I'm sorry. This is Kate. Sarah Jane. Oh, you're, oh, who am I talking about? Yeah, yeah. Kate Smith. Kate Smith, So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. The Kate. I missed it. Stuart? Yeah, what is this from? From outside? We have sandwiches? We have sandwiches. Oh. Sandwich. From where? Oh, my God. Who gave us sandwiches? Did you just say Mendocino that? Farms? Oh, because oh, it's our first Friday. Uh, let's take these over. I'm just going to steal one of these sandwiches. I apologize. I'm going to be eating. I'm going to be eating in We've into the mic, and I apologize in advance. <laughs> this one is good. It's got bacon on it. I think. <laughs> There's no nuts in this, are there? No. Yes. I'm gonna die. <laughs> are you? Please don't. Yeah. One of them don't have nuts. This one doesn't, but it doesn't have bacon. Oh, it's fine. It'll be all right. I'll just uh, here. I'll I'll donate this one to one of you guys. <laughs> By the way, thank you very much. I know, uh, sort of a break in the stream here as we're trying to get... Uh, this is nice because in the past... So a lot of you guys don't know, but um, we, we uh, on the first Friday of every month, we get fed here for free, which is always nice. But we every do. single time we it's do. Happened, Yes. But every single time it's happened, we've been playing Doctor Who. So every time the game ends, we go outside to find the bones of, a, of like, <laughs> like the carnivores have ingested. Like, so we always miss lunch here because the show's from 12 to 3. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, we are fed. This is going to this is going to be quite well. Um, uh, so uh, I'm just going to drop as much like sweet vital character as information well. as I can while they're not listening. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, just just to create chaos. Give us that sweet sweet exposition dump. We don't know who wants what. So anyway, and that's what happens, Finn. Huh? See, it worked. Do you see that? Dang it! <laughs> All right. Um, Did you pick one? <laughs> I'm not sure what they are so exactly. You pick first. Yeah, just pick whichever. Yeah. So, yeah. Mickey. Wait. Okay. Should Mi I introduce myself then? Um, Sarah says, uh, actually, we've been watching since Mickey encountered all of you. I'm just going to put right. Mickey just kind of taps at a camera on his armor. Someone taps it. They, says, they really do like to watch, don't they? <laughs> I, I do wonder yeah. a bit. Where were you when, when Rose and... John, uh, we're nearly killed by the temporal guards. That's actually how we showed up so quickly onto the scene. We've been observing and watching you. And Rose says, excuse me, you've been watching us? <laughs> how much have you been watching us? It was a request. This is what Sarah Jane says. That's a request by whom? That's not an answer to the question, though. How... Like. Sarah Jane <laughs> says, you asked us to watch over and protect Rose and Mr. Smith. She smiles. I should hope I did, but... Before you disappeared and presumably died. Right. It was paramount that this family remain under the protection of unit. You're quite right, too. I should tell you now that we have no current strategy against the temporal god and so it has been a constant intelligence gathering you just ordeal. shoot them it seems to go quite well for us perhaps it I goes like well for you who thing. can run around the galaxy but for us we're here to protect earth and if we are, if we rise the ire of Gallifrey, there would be little that we could do to defend ourselves. Hang on, how often are the TG down here? We've detected their incursions four times, on four separate occasions. Four times? Presumably, do you know why they were down here? 
No. Since when? What were they doing? She holds up her hands. <laughs> says, I will brief all of you as necessary. But first, let's all settle in. I have my questions as well. Please. And she offers the table. Mm-hmm. Are there sandwiches on yeah. the table? Yes. There are sandwiches. Let's put that in character. <laughs> there are sandwiches on the table, yeah. everyone. Haha, <laughs> no oh. complaints now. Oh. Lovely sandwiches. Mm. Mm. I'm probably just going I'm to have my branches in, in, in a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> like you do. Right. Mm. Welcome to Sandwich Who. Um, everyone sits down. The last thing the you table. ate was terrible pirate food. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as, as she's having tea brought, the elevator door opens and charging into the room with this, like, Look on her face, like looking around, you see Martha. <laughs> Dr. Martha Sorry. Jones comes running into the room and says, where is he? Is he here? And she runs up to Mickey and says, where? And spots the clone and goes, oh, oh, I thought someone said the TARDIS had arrived. And Mickey goes, yes, dear, actually, and points to you. Oh, well, hello, Martha. Martha stares at you and says, Hello? shakes your hand. I'm sorry, I don't understand. And she looks New around. face, you're a sharp one, you've got it. No. <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. I didn't doubt it, but apparently I can. It's gonna happen a lot today, I bet. <laughs> well. You look well. Oh, well, thank you, I'm the chief medical officer of unit. Fantastic. Always a bit much with the guns around here, but otherwise it's a delightful to see so many of you. Uh, Sarah Jane says, I'm sorry, I know this is very exciting for all of us, and I don't mean to be rude, but there's a lot to cover. Um, she activates the screen console, and you, the, or she activates the screen using a console. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and uh, as you see these images Neat. start popping up, um, you see the world as it is today. Um, and she says, these are the images of where we have been tracking the temporal god as they have appeared on Earth. And you see the Taj Mahal, you see various like capitals around the, the, the world. We think they have been searching for John here. And she nods, thinking that John was perhaps you. Mm. We've managed to throw them off using what technologies we have. Um, we know they can locate us. We haven't been able to prevent it yet. It has become tricky, but we are devising a plan to obscure Time Lord DNA so that the family can be protected. Mm-hmm. But it is serendipitous that you've arrived from another universe, apparently. <sighs> um, We've been tracking your movement since you arrived on Earth. As you know, we have ways of detecting when the TARDIS has landed. We feared that the Temporal Guard would be able to find out how to get a hold of these technologies, but as it turns out, they didn't need them since they discovered you. Um, However, we have noticed that we've been having difficulty using our technologies against temporal incursions uh, to detect them. This is due largely to these and she activates the screen again and you see those very familiar looking temporal rips in time that you've been encountering she says we've c- tracked 13 temporal rips in space time in just the past two weeks um, but that's not what's most fascinating um, she clicks it again and you see old black and white photographs popping up taken from various time periods when photography was available and you see evidence or at least suspicions like circles of what could be temporal rips just appearing. Mm. And some of these are just like stock photos from God knows when. Like, you're, I mean, we're looking at like someone shaking hands in front of the Golden Gate Bridge as it was being built. You just see little specks where suspected temporal rips are in the background. Um, and uh, she says, what we believe is that these rips have splashed across time. Uh, we're not quite sure what they are, how they got here, or how to close them. But whatever they are, they've managed to disrupt the time distortion detecting technologies that both the temporal guard have and us as well. I'm afraid I may have brought them with me a bit, but we're still looking into what they are. Yes, we detected from the moment you arrived that your vibrations are different from those vibrations that exist in our own reality. 
Um, Amy, go ahead and make a, the doctor needs to make a intelligence, or intelligence, an ingenuity plus uh, technology check. Okay. Base 13. 13 and 9, 22. 22, okay. Um, there's nothing about Sarah Jane that's insincere. And you're not detecting anything, you're not detecting anything necessarily suspicious about her. This wasn't for that kind of role, but what you are starting to catch on to in her language is a few <clears throat> times she's made references to technologies and, and events that you're not sure how it's possible she knows about them. She seemed to be mm. aware that you were from another reality, first of all, and she seems to be aware that uh, she just basically let slip that they have technologies to detect your vibration yeah. from one reality to the next. That technically should be, on, be beyond the purview of unit. That's a technology level that's much higher than human standard. Um, and, she can, and she just continues talking. As you, you just kind of catch that. It's kind of... And uh, from the looks of it, John... He seems to catch it too, but he doesn't say anything either. But you guys both kind of glance at each other to see if you're thinking the same thing. And you see that sort of, that classic David Tennant expression where he just side glances at you for a moment to see. If, and when you do the <coughs> eyebrow raise, he says, hmm, and looks back a bit. And Sarah just keeps talking. Um, she says, right now, our principal goal is to discover the nature of these temporal rips, but also discover anything we can about the temporal god and we do have a lead we've discovered that the temporal god has a small watchtower so to speak a, a base of operations here in london all right we could do something with that these two have been fighting them for quite a long time you would do well to listen to whatever they've got to contribute of course anything that you can contribute any information you have about your encounters with them the only thing we know is, is that their temporal, their vortex manipulators allow them to warp space time around themselves so that they can literally step through time. Right. You Quite so, like they're very handy. <laughs> oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> oh, <it's just> <laughs> <laughs> um, you see her eyes light up. It says, yes, they've, they've fine-tuned these vortex manipulators so that they can actually warp space time around their immediate vicinity, which is what we, from what we've seen, is very dangerous, but they managed to do it. It does get a little itchy, though. Forgive me. You get used to I it. Would be, I would be failing in my duty if I didn't ask. May we please look at one of those? Oh, absolutely, under no circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> you also see, as you, as you sort of react to, Doctor, you see John Smith stiffen a little bit. Um, and then Rose suddenly <clears throat> cuts in and says, Excuse me. And everyone, everyone turns and looks. She's like, I understand that there have been a lot of words coming out of everyone's mouth, but no one has precisely told me what in the hell is going on. Yeah, what she said. Um, I don't understand. I don't understand any of this. Uh, Sarah Jane says, "I'm sorry the two of you have been wrapped up into this. It, it was our intention to make sure that you had no contact with this kind of life ever again." And Rose says, "Don't get me wrong. It was fun back in the day, but I've got a few other things to worry about now." And her eyes again fall upon you, and she seems like, it doesn't look like she knows what to say <coughs> to you. Like she's completely, she has no idea what to say to you. <coughs> um, uh, and at that point, John says, I don't know if Rose and I can be any help here. What, what would you need us for? And Rose says, you're going to need us for nothing. We're not stepping into this. We have a family now. We can't do this anymore, John. She and you see, you see John kind of, he, it looks like he relents a little bit and kind of nods to her and says, I'm not the doctor. That was another life. It didn't belong to me. In fact, if you want to get technical, I was a mistake. I, don't think I mean, I, I did help save the universe, I will say that. <laughs> but you know. I've got another universe to save now, and he nods over to David and Rose. So, um, I don't know how much help we can be. And Sarah says, no, I understand. In truth, it perhaps would be best to at least keep you out of harm's way. 
would you at least consent to protection from unit? Or perhaps a relocation? Rose says, absolutely not. We've started a life. I'm not going to uproot that because of whatever this is. And she kind of waves her hands at the table where, where the, the images are all up on the screen. And there's a silence that kind of falls at the table. If you are who you say you are, then tell them. Tell them to leave us alone. And she gives you that, that look that you've seen her give so many times. You've seen her beg you to saving people's lives. You've seen that look in her eyes so many times where she's looking to you for the answer. And what do you say to her? She just puts you right there on the spot. You've always gone your own way. There's no reason to stop now. But let them protect you for Pete's sake. You see that, again, that familiar stubbornness, that hot-headedness that Rose has. And she kind of, she doesn't argue with you, though. <clears throat> um, you see, she just kind of, all right, fine. But I don't want to see you, any of you. And she kind of motions to unit. She says, we're going to have a normal life. You could never be normal if you tried. John says, it's got a point. And you <clears throat> see Rose just... <sighs> and Sarah Jane says, we can... It's possible that we can outfit you with, or at least create some sort of emitter that would jam any detection of Time Lord DNA. Have you been doing it before? I'm sorry, I'm really not at liberty to say. There I think some... you'd better start. Sarah Jane says, it pains me to say this, Doctor, but I really can't tell you. Are you the director, or aren't you? Which is precisely why I can't tell you. And you see, John goes, hold up. You're not going to tell us. Sarah Jane just says, I'm very sorry, Doctor. Please don't ask further. Do you want her help or not? Please, we need it. Sarah Jane Smith, what aren't you telling us? Um, and you... Um, <laughs> you can see she gives that... She kind mm. of looks at, at John, and it's almost like she's... From Sarah Jane's perspective, it's almost like two number fours are looking at her with those <laughs> eyes, kind of like, Sarah Jane, kind of giving her that look. Um, she says, please don't, please don't judge me. I'm doing it for the good of UNIT and planet Earth. There are certain things that UNIT does that you would not approve of, Doctor, but it has helped us survive. All right, well, I'm not the Doctor, and I don't know ya, so... If you wanted my help, I would have helped you. Now, I'm not so sure that I like you right now. If you want this planet to have a future, you will help us. This has nothing to do with me. Right, this is about helping John Smith and that little baby and that, that woman. Um, that is your, that's your, your mission, right? And yet you're hindering it right now. Mickey steps forward and says, look, all we're saying is we can't, it's not, there are just certain things that UNIT must keep secret that we do in order to help this place. Well, where I, I come like from, the sound of that. you tell the truth and you share information so that you can help each other. We're sharing by keeping what's necessary. Secrets, by keeping secrets, people get killed. <coughs> well, Mickey's always I'm been... I'm invoking my hot-headedness. Yeah, I'm getting real yeah. mad okay, right okay, now. Okay, okay. Mickey's <laughs> always been one for secrets, haven't you, Mick? <laughs> he looks at you and says... You and I need to sit down and chat. Yeah, we <clears> do. I'm just looking back and forth between the two. I'm like, I can't believe it. <laughs> Without <laughs> your bloody guns and all of these soldiers around you. You're in a grave. I buried you myself. What are you talking about? Sarah Jane, How? Sarah Jane says, wait, wait. We're getting, let's, if we're going to discuss this, let's at least make it orderly. Well, I want some answers too. I want to know how 
I ended up here. And if we're fighting for you and this planet, which isn't really ours anyway, because this ain't what I left two days ago, or however, however the hell long this has been. It does get <laughs> I need to know something about you people. You see, um, I'm gonna. I, it, I'm not even gonna require a roll. Sarah Jane looks really. She looks really uncomfortable. Doctor, you've seen this expression, uh, like you, like I've said many times before. Um, you're detecting a hint of like. She looks like she might be disappointed with herself. <laughs> but, she also looks resolute. And she says, perhaps. Perhaps now is a good time for a break. We can answer questions in private for questions that need to be answered in private. And she nods to Mickey, who says, yeah, yeah, a lot of catching up to do, I think. And then Rose stands and says, what about us? And Sarah Jane looks at her and says, I'm sorry, Rose. I just, I need you to give us just a little bit of time so that we can protect you and then we will stay out of your way. And Rose just says, fine. And she steps down off the platform. And John stands up and says, excuse me for a moment. <laughs> and follows her. And then you just see Sarah just. <sighs> Detecting awkwardness, master. You hear a canine <laughs> pipe in. <laughs> Good, it wasn't just me. I, I think so. <laughs> um, Sarah just kind of smiles and it? says, oh, it's such a Canine's personality <laughs> has evolved a bit since uh, you last saw him, I'm suspecting. He's become a bit sarcastic, <laughs> more than usual. <laughs> well um, done. <laughs> I want to give you as many answers as I possibly can, but my hands are tied in certain aspects. By who? Let me guess, you're you can't say. No, I can say you're just really not going to like the answer. Policy. Policy. <laughs> Policy. <laughs> the doctor look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She just kind of says, I know, I know. There are reasons behind it. Please. You have to understand there are many things that are taking place here that you have not been privy to, and the two of you aren't even from this time period. You don't know what we have been having to go up against to protect Earth. All I know is that if you're ashamed to tell the doctor what you've been doing, it's probably the wrong choice. That seems to put her at a complete lack of response. Um, whatever argument you could probably level against Sarah Jane, that one leaves her speechless. As though you, she completely... <laughs> And you see her, she kind of blinks for a second, looks down, and she stands up and says, I'm sorry. I truly am. It's just, but I really want to know, though. <laughs> uh, I can tell you anything that is relevant to mission success. But for now, it's important that we just move forward. Okay. Mm. We can detect temporal occasions on occasion. They are difficult to track because of the rips in space-time, but we have been able to discover that their base of operations are here. And she clicks, and you see a very nondescript-looking building somewhere in London. Um, it looks like maybe uh, a place, probably like a, uh, an outsourcing center, maybe where uh, cargo or whatever from overseas arrives, waits, and then gets shipped out. But it's deep. It's not in, it's not in the docks area, but it looks like a... Like a, what do they call it? Um, uh, a house, uh, the... Uh, warehouse? It's like a warehouse, but it's basically like their outsourcing center where like thing goes, things arrive here, hmm. they get packaged and then shipped Fulfillment out Fulfillment center. Fulfillment center, yes. <laughs> um, nice. So it kind of looks like, and you guys do see like trucks arriving. It looks completely normal. Um, and she says, we know that at least two temporal gods have used this place as their... Re as a base of operations to keep tabs on the happenings of Earth. We don't know what their objective is, but we know that if we can get inside this building, 
we might be able to uncover the vital intelligence that we need to protect them. Then she points over at Rose and John and, and us. You think you can increase our ability to cloak their signals with something we find in there? Well, the temporal guard, think of it this way. Have they appeared on your trackers for Time Lord DNA? Yes. Yeah. 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 They have? They did. Yeah. yeah. We found four when, when we last checked on ours. See? We had them too. They're ever so fancy. What are you using to track them? She... You're able to track them? But yeah, that's yes. kind of the point of these things, actually. Please let us study one. Just one. Oh, so now you want our tech and you won't give us yours? I see how it is. Yes. And why should I? We've got the, uh, we've got the upper hand here. Um. I'm sure she just really does want to tell us though. And, and yeah, I, I have to <coughs> know. I really, really have to know. I'm going to read her mind. <laughs> <laughs> I have insatiable curiosity. I have to know. You have telepathy? Um, <coughs> it's... In order to take precog, you have to take psychic. I don't oh, have telepathy shit. like sending messages back and forth, but it's reading mind. It's you're um, gonna go full on Professor oh, X on her. Nice. I, I can't. Yeah. I can't yes. make people do anything. It's um, contested. Um, I, I roll awareness stuff. plus resolve plus four, and you roll resolve plus ingenuity. Okay, one second. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. I, I have Oof. to know. Oof. I can't not know. I, um, I need to know. I secretly approve of this. <laughs> <laughs> I tried yeah. to like sort of catch eyes. Like, can I get the go ahead? Um, oh yeah. I need to know. So, I need to know. So I just need to know. I know you're over there for a second because I, I need to check this book. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Get, get the stats. Oh, you my money. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I need to know. I know it's not the best mm -hmm. idea. It's I know that this should probably be accomplished politically. I just I have to know. Roko. I'm. Uh. Yeah. Let's see. I've been Finn, seeing all of Finn it. just looks at you and sees that smile and knows exactly what you're going to do. So <laughs> uh, Okay, so I'm sorry, what is it? Is it contested? Uh, resolve plus um, ingenuity. Resolve plus ingenuity. Yes. Okay, okay make your not. roll. Yeah, and I roll <laughs> awareness plus resolve plus four. Oh, that almost went off the, off the map there. Okay, so that is 21. Cool. Now it's just costume stuff. Nothing as interesting as I'm making it out of <laughs> quite enjoyed my lunch just now. Oh yeah, that was oh, really, yeah. that was really great. Really great. I'm still eating the crumbs because I want to. <laughs> 21? Mm-hmm. You have to beat it. Is 21? there a character sheet for Sarah Jane in there? there yeah. Is. Oh man. That's amazing. Nice. Um she resists you. <laughs> Does she know? Dang it. Um you see Sarah go and then she looks at you. And she says, arrest her. Oh, oh wait, sorry, I don't think right. so. <laughs> throw myself in front of her. Uh, you then. throw yourself. Is there, is there a, that's, that's a girl um, word. What's... Without missing a beat, <laughs> so this is all what happens. It, it all happens all at once. It's pure chaos. You see Sarah, she kind of, and then you see this look in Sarah's eyes that you've only seen a few times. And she points at Roko and shouts, arrest her. And you immediately react by throwing yourself so I, in front. I'll said, give you that. No one touches her, them. No um, one touches them. Uh, so when you scream, no one touches them, uh, you guys find yourself surrounded by unit. Nobody has their guns drawn. Oh, um, but everyone immediately follows. And you see, like, uh, you basically see the, the, these cuffs. And a couple of hands as everyone shows up. I, just, I had to know. I had to know. Yeah, I, Will goes, I had to know. I had to know. <laughs> What's happening? Your friend here just attempted to read my mind without my being, permission. You weren't being honest with us. And you, that gives you a right to break into my mind? Well, it's, it's, how, we, it's how we do things. I, 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 had to, I had to know. I'm sorry. I, I... What give, and what gives you the right to invade into people's lives like you do? Mickey, tell him to leave her, them alone. Tell him, tell him to leave them alone. She didn't do anything wrong. We just want some... Bloody answers. Uh, can I do? Is this something I would have to roll for to try? And if you want to try to convince, to convince him, him? Yeah. yeah, go ahead and make a roll. It's going to be. Ooh. Can I have a plus one presence <laughs> because I have this charming thing that I've never used 
Um, <laughs> oh yeah, this is perfect. You have charming? Yeah, I do. I've never used it. Yeah, this is great for charms. Well, I, I yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't so like go ahead and make the roll. I'm gonna powers, resist it. Yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> no, I just forgot. Oh, it. I think I probably one of my other choices probably might have given me a false shame. Oh no! What's that? Um, I'm not sure. Um, it's it's I I he, I will know for future. You um, get you had a plus two. I'll tell you. I might have had an additional two. Yeah. I, I'll tell you now. Um, just just yeah. to make to steal any regret, I spent story points for Sarah Jane. Uh, okay. So she was gonna beat you on that roll. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah. <clears throat> well, I, I thought about it, but hmm. okay. What would I? What? Uh, at what traits would I be? So this is going to, to be a. Uh, this is gonna be a presence plus convince. And then so charm is plus. Two. And then you're gonna get a plus two for your charming. Seventeen. Um, he. You see him. He kind of. I'm sorry, mate. And he pulls out handcuffs. Hold on. I put my hand on my gun. Okay, when you put your hand on your gun, you see a couple of members. I don't take it out. I just A couple of members there. of unit do the same. And Sarah goes, no, no. At the exact same time, the doctor, you, everyone's, no, 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 no. It, it mustn't come to this. I rather agree. Doctor, your friend attempted to read my mind just now. Do you know you could do that, but it's... Generally not considered polite on Earth. Uh, 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 well, maybe you could tell us then. Um, you're not used to seeing Sarah quite so authoritative the way she's being, but she is kind of giving you the, a look of distrust at this point and says, Doctor, if you will vouch for her, I will rescind my order, but you will be monitored for further psychic activity from this moment on. Any breach in that order, you will be arrested and escorted away from unit. Do doctor. I won't let them take you, but it might be best to stay out of other minds when we can help it. Uh, oh, okay. She nods. You see she's grateful for the agreement. Um, doctor, uh, if you want, if you want to get a read on Sarah Jane, because I've been giving you like breadcrumbs from here and on, <laughs> you can go ahead and make your in, an ingenuity awareness check. Yeah. To try to get a, a read on her. Um, She's obviously hiding. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Something. I should say. Mm -hmm. Thirteen plus nine, twenty-two. Twenty-two. Um, she doesn't like any of this. She doesn't like that she's having to put her foot down. She doesn't like that she's ordered the arrest. You can tell that she's very uncomfortable with this whole situation. And you're also getting the feeling she is... She looks... Maybe she's fighting a little heartbreak that you might be judging her right now. But there is a... There's this... There is a iron defiance. Like she's not going to budge on her duty is what you're getting from her. So that's kind of giving you a, a landscape of who you're dealing with right now with Sarah. Mm -hmm. It's a little different than the Sarah you remember. It's a little like Kate almost. Yeah. Kate kind of has that, I'm on your side, but here's the line, you can't cross it kind of thing, which has always been a pain in the ass. Um, it's kind of like the burdens of duty, basically. Yeah. You see it on Sarah Jane's shoulders. But, um, but she does raise her hand and everyone backs away from you guys. I don't think I like this place. I'm sorry. Nobody tells you things and they have guns. We've got guns too, you know. <laughs> I don't like them though. You like them. I don't. I, I like people to talk to each other. I know, I'm trying. Sarah Jane says, I'm very sorry you don't like it here. But generally we don't allow people to break into our minds. You could let me in. Yes. And she just stares at you and lets that <laughs> linger. <laughs> um, Mickey says, I'm going to go and check on the other two. And he kind of gives you a look before moving off. It's almost like he's kind of like... Yeah. And he, so I'm going to follow Mickey then? Okay, you follow off Mickey. And Sarah says... Martha, would you see to it that these two are taken care of with sincere hospitality? And Martha says, yeah, um, do you want, are you hungry? 
could maybe use some food or something. Food here is actually quite good. Do, do you have a terrace? I could, I could use some sunlight. Oh, there's the Tower of London. <laughs> she shrugs. I'm sure we could find you sunlight. Uh, good, I'm starving. <laughs> it's very, you see this it's, genuine, we don't get a lot of sun in this Martha place. Martha kind of looks at you with this genuine look of fascination. It's just like, I have so many questions for you. Are you <laughs> I'm a doctor, you know, and, and I'm, I'm, uh, not, I'm just curious about your, your species, if that's okay. Oh, curiosity is lovely. Oh. Oh, uh, oh, let's begin here. And then uh, she walks off with you. Uh, mm. Those two, Martha and in Rocco, immediately start ch uh, mm -hmm. chattering back and forth. Um, what are you mm. going to do? Mm. Mm. Oh, I'll, I'll just look at you and just be like, do you need me down here? No, I, th I think go with him. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Might as well keep them out of trouble. <laughs> I'm not trouble, they're trouble! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, stepping away, uh, we'll just take this scene by scene. Mm -hmm. um, you find yourself alone with K9 and Sarah Jane standing uh, on the platform. All right, what's this all about? What policy? What have you had to do? Doctor, when I took over this role, there were a lot of things that I didn't like about it, but I had to agree to. And there was no one else capable of taking over this role. My time in the TARDIS with you made me the prime candidate to be the leader of UNIT, especially after Kate disappeared. I have no choice. I believe you've got lots of choices. No, you don't understand. There are things that UNIT does that I don't approve of, but they have saved us. You have been dead. And Gallifrey has become whispered as a tyrannical regime. It's feared throughout the universe. Well, you're quite right, too. Um, Roko's species apparently was wiped out. They're not the only one, Doctor. They're not the only one. It's not just the Daleks that have been completely eliminated from the universe. Completely eliminated? There are no more. From what we know, the Time Lords have completely eradicated them just after the Time War when, when the Time Lords declared victory. Oh my god. Things went a bit differently in my world. How? We thought... We thought both sides were destroyed in the time war. In, in fact, the, the way I got here is I was trying to fix it. I was trying to save Gallifrey. I, I was the one who had destroyed them. You I see this look immediately pass over her face of just like confusion. Says, it's why I know certain choices are never acceptable. I'm sorry. I find that hard to believe that you would be capable of doing such a thing. I'm proud you think so. And I never... But we fixed it. We th I thought we did. I'm, it's already getting fuzzy. But... That's how I've ended up here. What happened here? Well, for a long time, there's so much to say. There was the doctor, you, whom I don't remember much. He was my friend as much as I imagine I was yours in your reality. And he was hell-bent on protecting us from the tyranny of Gallifrey. But that's just it, Doctor. I don't remember how he died or much of what happened before. No one does. <coughs> We're only vague recollections that it did happen. Look, I don't know... 
how much Roko's able to, but why not let them into your mind? Because I'm not the only one that suffers from the malady. Computer bases, uh, com uh, databases, not computers. Nikki, everyone, no one remembers how it's happened. All we know is for a fact is that the doctor was here and the doctor was killed. But the, there are gaps in history, like they've been completely muted. They're there, but un inaccessible. No one knows how it's happened or why. The Doctor is the only reason why we know about what's happened on Gallifrey, and that the Gallifrey is not to be trusted. The Doctor is the only reason that we know about the quarantine on Earth and about the, the temporal guard. I can't even tell you how long it's been since I've seen the Doctor. It may have been yesterday. Where are you getting the technology you're using? Much of this is quite beyond what I expect from UNIT. We've had to use certain ingenuity. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that question, Doctor. It's, it's difficult. It's Sarah Jane. She puts her hand, she just leans back in her chair and she says, I, I never thought I would ever have to explain it to you but I stay awake at nights knowing that you would be disappointed in me, and that breaks my heart. We've all done things that we are ashamed of. What matters is what we do now. Give me time. Right now, more than anything, we just need to get the information that is in that building from the Temporal Guard. And then, after we do that, I will show you. But a promise. I promise. I absolutely promise. It's good to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> you see, she cracks in a little tear, and she says, it's good to see you too. I, I, <laughs> I must say, I, It's, this you is like taking some adjusting. Yes, thank you. Yes. <laughs> I, uh, I can't find the words, but it's, uh, you look lovely. <laughs> I had often wondered. I thought it was about time, too. It does sort of give you a wider perspective of the universe. It is odd that a race such as the Time Lords, who can see across time and space, don't try to at least get all of the perspectives of, well, everything. Oh, well, gender is a complicated thing. One of the benefits, I think, perhaps, of being non-binary. <laughs> she shrugs. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere off in the distance, Roko's like, yup. <laughs> <laughs> Roko's like, you don't even know. <laughs> I don't envy you guys of one damn bit. Um, so, um, but she smiles and just, um, I hit. It's odd because with you, I, I see an old friend, and, and yet you're such a new face from somewhere so far away. I don't know if there's time to catch up or if we've had the same adventures. How is, have, do you have a son? Um, there's no need for a role. When you say that, you see uh, it like a stab to her oh. chest. And uh, she says, Luke, and she looks down, and she says, Luke is dead. I'm so sorry. And, uh, we don't know how. It's the same issue. All that we know is that my son has passed, and there's no record or anything as to when or how it happened. Let us help you, Sarah Jane. She nods. Maybe first though, we should do right by them. And she nods over and you see off in the corner, um, you see, um, you see Rose and John and little David and Sarah just says, it's odd to say this, 
But he looks like you. He has your eyes. I thought so. Which yeah. ones? I don't know. <laughs> she kind of smiles. He says, Aww. Perhaps I wonder if he'll wear the sideburns. <laughs> um, maybe you should talk to them. Or I leave it to you. We have a minute. We're going to assemble a briefing. With you here, these temporal guards are going to be moving very quickly to what agenda we don't know, but if we can get you inside that building as quickly as possible to retrieve any data or information, that, that would go a long way to making their lives and ours safer. Absolutely. And, Doctor, it's not fair of me to ask this, but if you could convince your rather angry Irish friend if we could look at those <laughs> vortex manipulators, it's unlike anything that we've come into contact with. If it's helping track Time Lord DNA, it could help us keep tabs on them as much as mute their signal. If I can give you my word that the technology will not be abused. Can you? In this instance, yes. We just want the sensor technology. We don't want the vortex manipulation. We can't risk it. If Gallifrey notices us manipulating space-time, they might bring the full might of their armies down upon Earth. And that we would not be able to stop. I'll have a word with her. <laughs> Thank you. I'll have a word with her. <laughs> <laughs> it's good Unless to see you that. again, Master. <laughs> yeah, Finn will have some <laughs> At that point, Canine finally pipes in and says, It's good to see you again, Master. Oh, you're an. <laughs> do I give. Can, do I. Does Canine have an equivalent of treats? <laughs> <laughs> I'm certain there's a Whovian watching right now. They would probably say yes immediately. I'm going to just spend scripts. a story point to say that I can sonic him some like kind of pleasant treat-like <laughs> experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like a sonic Like a little coding script. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Good. <laughs> can I do that? Yes. Yeah. All right. I'll let you do it. Yeah, so um, cute. Um, you, it, uh, you heard that, like the old, good old, like, 70s sound effect, the <laughs> computer beeping. And then you hear, oh, thank you, master. <laughs> and Sarah Jane just kind of laughs. She says, also, if it's not too much, perhaps you could tell us how to do that as well. <laughs> Should go a long way. Well, I probably don't have a sonic, but we can come up with a reasonable facsimile. She mm. smiles and nods. Um, let's cut to you and Mickey walking over to the corner, <laughs> and he stops and says, um, and then he hugs you. He puts his arms around you. I do not reciprocate. Okay. He, he, Ice. Um, he doesn't seem to... I'm cold. cold. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> the way he hugs you though, it, it's, it's, it's too much for him. You, you can hear him getting a little like, <clears throat> and he steps back and he just says, I, uh, I was at your funeral. I, well, I wasn't. No, but that's the problem is that you were, you were there. You're from somewhere else, but the Cillian that I grew up with, who was like a brother to me. I, it's strange to see you again. It's great to see you again. Trust me, Mick. It's me. It's the same me. And I remember all of that. But somewhere along the line, with all this time travel, my, our, my path diverged somewhere. I don't know where, I don't understand how this works. But it's still me. But this is... It's like a, a new reality. I can't explain how that works, but... Mickey says, you know, honestly, mate, I, I, never, I never understood it myself. I just followed the orders, tried to defend the Earth, that kind of thing. Seems like we're in the same boat, mate. Uh, so I'm going to ask you a kind of direct question. Was your All Mickey right. an asshole? Because you seem to think that I'm an asshole. <laughs> He wasn't for a long time, but where the hell have you been, man? What do you mean? We, after, after Madeline left, 
you know, you were all I had. Because my parents, I mean, who, who cares about them? You were, you were all I had left and you disappeared on me when I needed you the most. And now you show up here with these people with guns and you won't tell me what's going on. What do you expect? Uh. <sighs> Can I show you something? He, he goes over to a computer console and he types in a few things. He looks back at you as he's typing this up. Look. As you move over to look at the screen, you see Mickey with a smile on his face, and he's in uh, fatigues, camo fatigues. It looks like he's at a, like a training facility, mm -hmm. um, and he's got like a paint gun and a big shit-eating grin on his face and unit written across his uniform. And next to him in his arm is you. And camo fatigues with the words unit written across the uniform. Also with a shit-eating grin on your face. Um, and he's like, I don't know where you came from, man. But my Cillian watched my back and saved my life. I made a, a wrong bloody call one day. So, in this world, I was in unit? This thing? I was... You were my superior officer. You, I, you, I was your officer. Your superior, just I, take it, man. <laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> I will. How, how, Mickey? I don't <clears throat> understand. How did I get involved in this without... I don't, I don't understand. It's strange for me to hear you say that, because you recruited me. You got me into unit. You gave me this life. I was second in command of our, of our squad. We, you and I, we, God, we saved the world, you and I. Well, what was I like? You, I mean, you were, what were you like? You, you threw yourself in front of a bullet for me. Oh, b bloody hell. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, before all this, when we, when, what would... You disappeared one day. You disappeared one day. You stopped calling. I didn't hear from you anymore. I asked around. I thought you'd maybe run off. You'd always talked about, like, going to Japan or some weird place that I never thought you would go to. Not that Japan's weird, mind you. It's actually quite lovely. thought about moving there myself a few times, but... Yeah, I've still never gone. You were right about that. I never did do it. I never did go. Well, you came back one day looking fun and you had clearance. You took me aside and told me all about unit, told me what you did. I didn't believe you at first. I thought you were crazy. Makes sense. But then it started making sense with the doctor and all. Turns out Martha had already heard of Unit. She had been keeping it a secret. And one thing led to another. I enlisted. I wanted to do more. I was just a mechanic. I wanted to do more with my life. And because I wasn't traveling with the doctor anymore. But what's weird, man, is that so much history seems to be... It's like, it's like the director says. There's a lot that we don't know, that we don't remember from our own lives. All I remember, you threw yourself in front of a killing shot for me after I made a wrong bloody call, mate. It was my fault. You see, he's getting really, you, he kind of, he says, I can't tell you what it means to see you like this again, to see you standing here. Even if I do look like a hobo, pirate, something, yeah, I was going to ask. He points here. at your clothes. <laughs> He's like, you know, most of the time when people travel with the doctor, no, everyone just knows not to ask, but man. I thought you were going for the Bowie look. I, did, I just didn't want to question it. You will not believe where I was before this. 
like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't believe me if I told. Well, maybe you would. Maybe you would. Well, but you know what, Mickey? All of this. I think it, I think it's just time for me to put it behind myself, because clearly, what what we're dealing with here, it's not my life, and it's and you are not the you that I remember. I mean, we're still us, right? But yeah, things are different. And listen to me. The moment I'm back around you, listen to my, it, it all comes flooding back. <laughs> listen, um. Can I ask you for a favour, though? Yeah, go on then. It's, uh... Could you just do one thing for me? Let's have it. Can you forgive me? For messing up? Think I you... can. Thanks, I mate. Can. <laughs> and he just puts his arms around you again and he... he his voice cracks and he just holds you tight. <laughs> it's could release a pint, right? I swear. <laughs> and then uh, you guys part. He says, "Actually, we've got, we've got, we've got some. We've got some. If you want." If and you want some. from the back, uh, John goes, "I've got a tenant here. If you want one, <laughs> hey, hey." <laughs> um, so then, real quick, we're going to cut to uh, we're going to cut to um, Finn walking up the staircase. Uh, to the very top floor where you see this very large balcony area. Mm -hmm. And you see Martha out on the balcony um, next to Rocco, who is just... <laughs> <laughs> Sunbathing. Sunbathing. <laughs> Bombarding Rocco with questions. <laughs> Rocco completely unaffected by the onslaught <laughs> and answering everything at hyper speeds. Um, here's something that's interesting for you. Mm -hmm. The last time you saw London was 1712. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as you step out onto that balcony, you've seen a lot of shit yeah. in 11 years. A lot of shit. So you're not phased by much. You've seen, I mean, it's Doctor Who. You've seen it yeah. all. You've <laughs> yeah. been jumping, vor you've been vortex manipulating. You've been in the time vortex. I've seen you, a you've lot. Yeah. You've but seen all of kinds of races. You've seen human. supernovas. Everything you've seen. And when you step out onto the balcony and see London, you immediately think of your parents that you left behind when you got on that ship. You're, you're picturing like the old, the old pubs. You, you remember the old cobbled streets of London and like the horses and the smell of manure. Yeah. Like, things you never thought you were going to miss. It smells a lot different now. Yeah. It looks a lot well, different. not really but though. Some, but like there's the Thames. There's like... The freaking like, Tower of London is still here. That yeah. Was the worst case scenario there's for you as a pirate. There's a lot of landscapes here that are... <laughs> yeah. that are well, we were a that, lot of that, buildings still, still standing. The, yeah. yeah, all around the place. That's we actually had a weird kind of. Agreement. That's actually probably one of the things that's a little like hot, like amazing to what you. What is? A, there's a lot of buildings that are still standing. From, yeah. They don't look quite as new as they did when you last yeah. saw them, but <laughs> like there's there's structures here that you never thought you'd be standing on the Tower of London though. This no. is yeah. one place that you were probably grateful never to be involved with, but yeah. here you are. Um, and oh, Finn, your London is so pretty. I bet it's sunny like this all the time. I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> Should we have rolled to nice. see if there was any sun? <laughs> <laughs> is there sun? There's, we'll say this is a sunny day in London. <laughs> is the one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that one sunny day in London. All the time. Boy. Martha turns and looks at you and says, You're human though, right? Well, you know, most of me is. Oh, she points at your arm and says, I didn't understand until now. That is... I don't want to be intrusive. I know Unit likes to say, oh, can we look at that? And I, I promise <laughs> I won't do that. I'm mostly... You can touch if you like. Oh, this is so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> she, she touches it and she's like, can you feel that? I thought it might be like Star Wars, you know? Like you'd, I, it was a cybernetic hand and I could touch it, but you would know. I you know, like, well, you, you, can tell, you can tell me, what are the Star Wars? <laughs> <laughs> Have you never seen Star Wars? Oh, no. You yes, haven't. I many, but... <laughs> but people keep, are they referring to one specific Star Wars? I don't know. They, wow, we, we, are, we are getting Star into... I wish so Cillian were here. <laughs> two, yep. two issues we should probably avoid in, in Doctor Who is Star Wars <laughs> and politics. <laughs> um, yeah. um, no, I thought it'd be easier not to feel it in case I need to block something. So you're not something. married. <laughs> you live alone. 
And you've never seen we've, Star Wars? We've kind of tried Good to Lord. learn a little bit about <laughs> cybernetic technology for the purposes of replacing fallen limbs, and we've made great strides, but nothing that advanced. That's incredible. That's quite nice. Thank Looks you. good on you too, I think. <laughs> um, uh, Martha, essentially you guys kind of just shoot the shit with Martha yeah, up there yeah. on the thing. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's pretty surreal seeing London the way she is. But after about, I say about half an hour or so, you guys decide to reconvene downstairs at the CIC. Mm -hmm. um, as you gather, uh, as y'all are coming down, um, Sarah Jane's kind of asked everybody to reconvene as they're putting together a plan of attack of attack um, for the uh, breaking into this place um, is that's happening uh, Rose approaches you um, and uh, David's with uh, John and uh, Rose walks up and says you left didn't even really say goodbye you just you just stepped into your TARDIS with Donna and left. We had to. I've missed you every day. We've done all right. She thumbs back to John. Are you all right? I mean, are, are, you, are you okay? I'm fine. You were working with Torchwood, I thought. Yes, but... How long has it been? Years. Yeah. This world did move faster. I was working with Torchwood for a bit and then, well... David. <laughs> it just seemed to make sense, you know. We'd, we'd done so many things. I figured maybe the next adventure was that but uh, I was beautiful. worried about you you know it didn't seem right to me and don't get me wrong I love him more than anything but I always thought about you I always worried about you did you ever meet the doctor of this world I wanted to but he wouldn't he always stayed away. Do you know what happened? No. I caught wind a few times that something had happened, but the director's not wrong. There's a lot of gaps. It's strange too, it's like, uh, remember how people just sort of forget when the Daleks invaded? Yeah. It's almost the same phenomenon. It's like no one remembers, no one knows. It's strangeness. I don't understand it myself, but no one knows how the doctor died. But Sarah Jane came to our house one day to tell us that it had happened. She was very upset. And we tried to keep in touch. Donna's here. Yeah? We don't approach her though, because Apparently, the Donna of this universe never really went on any adventures with you. Oh. So we just kind of stay away. Why are you doing this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the we've, For real. We've uh, kind of made friends with her. Yeah. Sort of an inside thing I between John and I. I always thought you two would get on. She's great. We don't see her much. She got married last year. And uh, she's doing fine. She's living her life, but she has no recollection of the TARDIS or anything. She's never been outside of Earth. So she's just Donna, but she's Donna. I always liked you and her. A lot happened after the last time we saw you. We had well, we were in Norway. We had to uh, get back home. It's not like we had plane tickets. <laughs> oh, sh never thought about that. <laughs> Just 
rural Norway <laughs> we with just, no car. Yeah, <laughs> just left them on a beach in Bad Wolf Bay. Oh, <laughs> wow. Thankfully, Dad did have his credit card, so. Yeah. <laughs> and he was a rather successful <clears throat> businessman, even though he had questionable history. Mom and Dad are doing fine, by the way. Everything's oh, fine. Oh, lovely. There. And your baby brother? Sister? Yeah. There's, uh, there's just a lot to go over, really. <laughs> but everything's fine. Things got a bit weird after you left with the Cybermen and all. All that getting cleared out, you know? Yeah. But it hasn't been much of a problem. Unit has been really on top of it ever since Sarah Jane took over. But like I said, we've kind of made it a point to not be involved. Yeah. God, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> this is so weird. I mean, even for us, this is weird, you know? Yeah, a bit. They're going to take us back home now, and I just wanted to, you know, I guess say hello, goodbye again. Hello, Rose. Hello, Doctor. You see that, when she says that, just... She kind of catches herself and says, <clears throat> Oh, we should go. Um, would you like to meet David? I would love to. Um, you two walk over. Yeah, yeah. And you, in all your lives, never thought you would see this. <laughs> you <laughs> never thought... I mean, you've had a daughter. Mm -hmm. But... It was never, it was never there this. There was no baby. No yes, baby. no, it was a clonish recreation da daughter. Um, but uh, uh, you approach and um, John sees you approaching and you see this smoke. I'm really excited, but I'm sort of making awkward hands. Yeah. And, like, is this <laughs> um, and uh, John smiles as he approaches and he offers David to you as you approach. And you take David in your arms and you <laughs> see <laughs> this beautiful baby boy who definitely looks like Rose in the 10th version of you. Little miracle you are. Um, it's, it's of, all, of all the yous that you have encountered, um, this you is burned into your hearts immediately as you're holding him. It's... It's you, as the doctor, you've met different incarnations of yourself all throughout your adventures. Never have you met this incarnation of yourself. Never did you think you would meet it. But there it is, ba little baby David. And uh, uh, Rose, the three of you just kind of have this moment by yourselves. Um, and then you hear Sarah say, we're getting ready. And Rose says, I'll take him. And as you hand him back, uh, Rose just looks up at you and says, um, I know I said it a lot of times, but thank you and for everything. And yeah. Um, John extends his hand and says, it's good to see you again, Doctor. John, John works. John's fine. John. <laughs> John. Tough to get used to, wouldn't it be? Yeah. She's done a fine job of turning me around the same way she turned you around. I asked her to help you a bit. She did. She's good that way. Yeah. He looks right at David and then says, well, and then he kind of backs away for the two of you. And uh, as he walks out of the room, um, Rose just says, and she reads over and gives you a kiss on your cheek and then forces herself to step back and says, Goodbye. Doctor. Goodbye, Rose. And Goodbye, John. Goodbye, David. And the three of them kind of pause for a moment and you see them step into the elevator. And you see Rose one last time as those elevator door doors just close. And you're left standing there for a minute. 
I, I need you to scan this Donna and find out if she actually did go on adventures with me or not. She's not I know you're not in the room, and I can't see that. I'm sorry. <laughs> if uh, you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I need to make. A, to I need to make my own out of character request. Yeah. <laughs> we, that we go cruise by a house later. Can we? <laughs> <laughs> On the, maybe at the end of all the madness. Yeah. You, yeah. Just, you just want to. You just want to like screw with your parents. Bye. You should just screw with your parents and just walk in. Hey guys, just walk in. <laughs> 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 walk in in my, uh, my new uniform yeah. with my assault rifle. Hey, everybody. Mom, Dad, hey. so, uh, <laughs> it's <guys> been real. <laughs> 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 not my real mom and dad. <laughs> They're oh, cool. Oh, like one cool. of those scenes, you're not my real mom and dad. <laughs> one of these days, I really want to talk about how cool your dad is in real life. Your real life dad. Can I, can I just blurt it out? Can I just blurt it out? Sure, okay. yeah. Okay. So, this is going to blow your minds, audience. If you guys don't know this at home, this is going to quick time out from the game. Duncan's, <laughs> Duncan's dad is old school Jim Henson. He was principal puppeteer of Jabba the Hutt. Yo, and he was also that? Sir Didymus in Labyrinth. He was a Skeksis, an ancient one. He was... Uh, he was... was no, he wasn't one of the, the Skeksis. Well, he, 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 was, he sculpted a bunch of stuff for Dark Crystal. And he puppeted... Uh, the, the one of the mystics. Yeah, he yeah, was one, one of the mystics. mystics. He was puppeted yeah. one of the mystics. Didn't he also? He was Sprocket. In he was Sprocket in Europe, in European Fraggle Rock. In the because, European Fraggle Rock. Because in each country where it was broadcast, um, they did different segments yeah. with Sprocket and Uncle Trevor and Matt in the language of that country. Right. And in the U.S. it was somebody else, but everywhere else in the world it was my dad. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Your dad was the worldwide sprocket. Yeah, exactly. Wow. That's pretty cool. My favorite thing is walking into Duncan's house, like the, the, your dad's house. There's two glass cases filled with like Jim Henson stuff. And I remember seeing the original mold of Yoda from The Empire Strikes Back was in there. And there's this great picture of your dad puppeting Yoda from one of the scenes in Empire in Dagobah. And there was that, and it was signed. Uh, what, what was your, I'm sorry, what's it your dad's says, name again? Dave, get off my back. Love <laughs> <laughs> Mark Hamill, yeah. Oh, Mark Hamill, I love that. My favorite uh, thing is on the wall in uh, yes. his office. Yes. There's a life cast of David Bowie's head from for Labyrinth. Yes. Um, his dad kept it. And wow. so there's just a plaster, like of plaster of Paris, David, David Bowie Bowie's head <laughs> in in the in the I, in the garage. I, so I, whenever I, see, uh, I get really sad, I like to go in there. <laughs> Just and uh, go, yeah, and just Bowie. go stare at Bowie. It's Bowie's. You, he, I've seen it. It's it's from Labyrinth. It's Bowie's cool. face. That's so cool. It's unbelievable. It's, it's just sitting there. Painful. How cool. That is. <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. I'm gonna try and get my dad to come over here one of these days. Yes. Oh, if he yeah. if he can make come the time. Come play with Dude, us. Hector, if he can make you guys, it would be so amazing to interview him and just hear his stories. He's probably got so many hints and stories. Yeah. Like ah. Uh, Anyway. Tweet so, at L underscore dunk and then say nice things that he can pass on to his <laughs> yes. dad. Yes. Yeah. Say it on Twitter. Do it. Get, Do it. Come on, chat. It, it will happen. All yeah. the love it, to your father for happen. helping create I'll our get him over here. Because, I look, my, the reason my dad got into film and TV and making puppets and building shit is because of Doctor Who. He's <laughs> a huge Doctor Who fan. <laughs> when he was 15, he built a Dalek that you could get in and actually like wow. drive around. He's kind of like a mad inventor. <laughs> <laughs> and because of Doctor Who, your dad what? contributed to the birth of my childhood. What? And here we are playing Doctor Who. I just... Yeah, it's all it's all circular. Yeah. That is fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. I, what blows my mind is that he was Sir Didymus in Labyrinth. That's the point because my lady. <laughs> <laughs> the hands as well, you know, uh, yeah. the hands, yeah. he's, he's one of the hands. hands. Yes. Yeah. yes, which way? <laughs> which okay. one? Which Sorry, hand? we're totally going we're like off Doctor Who here. The, but the not. biggest but not. hair on the screen. The like, There's, she said I down. Don't, I don't remember, but you can tell right because now. one of the <laughs> pairs of hands is like really huge. Uh, oh, that's my dad. <laughs> yeah. Everyone in this studio is a fan of your dad's and yeah. probably everyone watching right now. <laughs> okay, so yes, father of the year. Uh, coolness factor 10. Um, all right. Um, so, Sarah Jane has summoned everybody back over to right. the CIC. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, back to, back to the, uh, the shit that's going on here in Doctor Who. Um, so, you guys approach the uh, CIC table. 
Um, at the table is Sarah. She has this uh, sort of a, an outline of the building, um, probably from like the, like, uh, you know how there's like blueprints in the, ar in the archives for architects? Um, she says, we're still trying to make sense of some of these designs. Uh, Roko, yeah. I need you to make a knowledge, an ingenuity knowledge check, and I'll give you your bonuses for alien technology. Yeah. All right. Get that Dr. Tardis combo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Ingenuity, um, 11 plus 7, um, 18. Okay. Eight, 18. So you, ah. um, before, oh, before anybody else... I'm a pathologist! Else, before, before anybody else even has an... an, an even the doctor, before anybody else has a chance to actually identify what they're looking at, you're like, oh, this is alien design. I know this. Yes. You, uh, looking at the, the structural blueprints of this building, because it is, you guys notice it is kind of oddly constructed with some of the support beams in weird places. Um, Roko, you can tell that this is a, um, this is definitely a stronghold. Um, it is, uh, it is inspired by the, oh my God, I'm forgetting their names. The race that conquered your planet starts with Jadun. Jadun, yes. Inspired by Jadun design, so it's it, this is like it's a fortress. Um, the way the walls are constructed are built to uh, withstand uh, frontal assaults mm -hmm. from all angles. Basically, it's it's designed. If you guys went charging in here, guns blazing, you'd be at a disadvantage. Um, you can also tell from the looks of it that there is no storage area inside. That the entire parts of this building. It looks like it's made to present the appearance of an everyday building, which is not surprising. Um, but just by looking at the design and the hallway designs and the architecture, there's no way this place is used for a storage facility. <laughs> um, and uh, to further uh, to push forward on your analysis, the shipping containers that you're seeing moved in and out of some of the footage, the intelligence footage of people observing it, um, there's no way these storage containers that are being brought into this building would fit in this building or in the doorways that they're moving them into. Ooh, I know this. Ooh, this is very bad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this, this is a Jadun stronghold design. I've, I've seen this. this. This used to be on my planet. Um, but this is not what you said it was. This is, there's no storage here at all. You, you actually couldn't even fit in this. So this one time I was trying to get into, you couldn't even fit shipping things into this. Those things don't go into those things. That's but nice. this, is, this is a defensive establishment and, and it's a Jadoon defensive establishment, which means it's going to be very, very hard to get in. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend going right in. That would be death. Do I know the Jadoon? Yes. The Jadoon yeah, yeah. are the rhino looking people that speak oh. in a very strange, yeah. Um, um, from the Martha Hospital Mars yep. episode? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, they're no good. No, they're ah. nuts. They're very warrior. They're very conquesty. They're also, um, you, as it clicks with you, you realize this is the race that apparently conquered Roko's planet. And probably one of the oh. cultural influences behind Roko's name. Roko, ko, ko, ko. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so she, I don't say it that way, though. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Roko. So your, your instinct immediately, as Roko's telling you all this, is they probably have extensive knowledge of how to navigate inside this. But Sarah Jane looks a little surprised, and she says, is it possible they're using Time Lord technology? They are Time Lords. Is Could it possible it? this is a lie and you're leading us into a trap? We won't know until we arrive. Doctor, do you think you and your companions are up for this? Oh, they're brilliant. They're fine. Oh. This is sort of a silly question, I suppose. <laughs> she smiles. She I says, have, well, always have good taste in friends. <laughs> unit will give you any backup you need. All right, so... I'm so sorry that you didn't came to your world. Yes, they... Well, they came here long, long before I was born, really. It, it was a whole conquesty thing and there were <laughs> Daleks and well really it's it's a very long and rather sad story but on my planet we we did resist them a little bit the <sighs> the psychic sea of forests but it's it's a bit hard um they're blasty they have guns they're blasty. i don't like guns <laughs> <laughs> they do with the pew pew death death kind of thing <laughs> um, not a fan I, I i am gonna peek a sneak a peek at martha if she's in the room because i it's occurred yeah, to me i don't actually know if this version of martha traveled with me does she 
showing any recognition of Jadoon? Um, Martha looks like she's completely, she's staring at the, at the blueprints a little, like as she's hearing Roko give the assessment, Martha looks a little nervous. And you, you're looking at her just in time for her to, to lean across and you can hear her whisper to Mickey, uh, they're not sending you into that, are they? Hmm. And Mickey says, yeah, they are. I'm going with them. All right, we, we've faced them before, but they're a bit tough. Yes, uh, but they're rather thick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so the, the temporal guards are using Jadoon technology, but they might also be using, I, I mean, obviously they're using Time Lord technology, they're Time Lords. Uh, it's, Sarah Jane says, it's strange to me though. Jadoon technology, generally speaking, is inferior to Time Lord technologies. I wonder why. Perhaps, I don't know. It, all we have is conjecture. We don't really know until we get inside. That's a very poor timing for finding things out. Sarah Jane says, I have to agree with you, but it's tremendous that you were able to tell us this. Yes, I tell people things. It's very helpful. She smiles and says, if you ever feel like joining unit, please let me know. She's oh, smiling. absolutely not. You're very blasty. <laughs> Sadly, that's true. Hmm. <laughs> that's, that doesn't come as a bit of a surprise. <laughs> unit has had to throw down a few times. <laughs> We've had our disagreements. Yeah. <laughs> Unit's had to drop the gauntlet from time to time. Um, yeah, so... Can uh, I roll something to stare at these plans and try to look for a way in? Yeah, go ahead. Uh... Um, this would probably be, I'm going to guess, this would probably be a... Say ingenuity. Ingenuity subterfuge, maybe. I'm going to think okay. this is going to be, okay, I'm going to say this is going to be an ingenuity technology check. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Base 13. That's, that's here. Um, Wheelhouse. Now, yeah. this wouldn't be a tech adept thing, though. I'm not using to it comes no, like, okay. No, not a tech yeah. Um, base 13, ugh, plus 3, 16. Uh, 16. Um, I mean, it's like there's something that bugs you about this, this blueprint. Um, your assessment is that it's very likely Roko is completely correct, but what bugs you about it is it, may, it, con it, it makes no sense. And it, it makes so little sense that you think it's a ruse. Mm. Um, but you're not sure why they would use that as a ruse. Like, what are they getting at? You're not sure. It makes no sense that they would use Jadun technology unless there was something really beneficial about using it as a stronghold. But the architecture inside itself, I mean, it is capable of withstanding incredible amounts of punishment. But it's, the, the problem is, is the variables of this reality, there's so many variables that yeah. even you, the doctor, are having trouble understanding why some choices have been made. Yeah. And there's what? also some things about this reality that just seem like paint has been thrown at a canvas. Like you're still trying to make sense of the whole picture. Yeah. You had your fingers on the pulse of the universe from the reality that you came from. And you're kind of trying to learn this universe's heartbeat still. Yeah. So it doesn't quite make sense. Um, Where uh, did you get these plans? <clears throat> Sarah Jane looks hesitant. <laughs> you, you, she says, she looks over at Mickey and Mickey, when Mickey sees that she's, that he's being looked at, you see he kind of leans back in his chair. Mickey. Um, he says, it's your call, ma'am. And Sarah Jane says, we have an asset. the same asset that we've been using for the technologies that you've been questioning. And without missing a beat, <laughs> K9 says, asset number 191111815. And Sarah Jane immediately, so you want me to read that off again? Because <laughs> I see yeah. you writing it down. 191111815. 191111815. 
one, five. Um, uh, you see Sarah Jane shoot a glance at K9 and says, K9! K9, full info on us at 1911111815, please. What would you ask? Uh, K9, full info on asset 1911111815, please. K9, don't you dare. And you hear uh, Sarah Jane raises her finger and she says, we have a deal, remember? I'm going to get a bit more information once we've got into this base. Best way to find out who's inside, I guess, is to just go knock on the door. Well, <laughs> let's do that, shall we? Maybe not the front I'm going door. to... Uh, Apparently you can't sneak inside, so how about we just try the front door? <laughs> <laughs> you can sneak through front doors. Yeah, with guns. Oh, not the blasty kind, just the defensive kind. Really, she hasn't I'm seen curious Lord if anyone at home, anybody, any of you guys watching, any of you Whovians at home, um, I'm curious if any of you guys are going to figure out that, uh, I will say this to sort of throw this out to the audience, um, that is a riddle, that asset number. So everybody watching at home, see if you can figure yep. out uh, that asset mm. number. You already know it? No, I just, oh, I just, I just like, like, I bet oh, there's yeah. a thing here. I got this. So I challenge anybody at home to try to figure out what that number was, but it does play into uh, the game today. Mm. <clears throat> so I will give you guys that little bit of I have no clue. breadcrumb. It's not Finn's job. Okay. It's not like it's Finn's job. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Got to time this out right. We're at two thirty already. All right. So. Like a yell. Yeah. Time <laughs> flies. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay. So you guys, um, she says, right now, our only method is to do a stealth insertion from above. Via helicopter, we have a, heli a, a stealth ship uh, helicopter that we can drop you all off on the roof of the building, sort of night Ooh. ops style, so to speak. Cool. I don't know, Doctor. You will know more than anyone how efficient this will be against Time Lords, but I doubt they know that we're coming, and they are certainly not counting on you being there. I rather hope not. Um, hmm. But we might need to plan this for tomorrow night so that we can see if we can somehow find a way to cloak your Time Lord DNA. I was just going to ask about that. Uh. Yes. She looks at you again. I <laughs> told Sarah oh. Jane that we might be able to have a talk about mainly the sensor portions of your vortex manipulators. <laughs> if it can help them to hide Rose and Baby David. That was what I was suggesting before she got a bit snippy. So then yes. Brilliant! <laughs> But nothing you don't think. They, they like don't want the travel is technology. There, is they the don't sensor want part of it something I can just take off? Um, or do I have <laughs> to give them the whole thing? With What's your technology rating, out of curiosity? Four. Uh, I'm okay. going to set the difficulty at 15. Go ahead and make a knowledge, go ahead and make an ingenuity and technology roll. I want to see how well Finn knows the yeah. simple manipulator. Because you've had it for a while. You may have learned a few things about it. What else did you say? Technology and what? It's technology and ingenuity. Difficulty is 15, so it's tricky. Fifteen. Fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. In your years of using this thing, yeah. you've, you've learned how to maintenance this yeah. thing to make sure that it doesn't break on you. Mm -hmm. um, you're also aware that the temporal manipulations when they try to get tweaked a little too much by the temporal guard, you've seen it have disastrous results for the temporal guard. Um, the temporal guard are you, you, this, and, and I'll leave it to you if you want to impart this information to everybody else. But with a 15, what you know about these temporal manipulators is that it's highly volatile 
but um, it is possible to remove the sensor unit. It's all part of one system, but you might risk... Destroying it? Well, it's not just destroying it. Or the tiny bits. There's... <laughs> It's not just destroying the the thing is is whenever you move whenever you manipulate or screw with something that that manipulates the time vortex and Dr. Reeves would probably know this too you risk doing more than just breaking it you miss breaking things that usually can't mm. be broken mm. um, Does all of this include them tinkering with it not just me giving them just the sensor You it's it's yeah, because they're gonna have to tinker with it yeah, to get the sensor. Yeah, they're gonna be doing it anyway. And you don't even know how qualified they are to mess with one of these things. They they did have Captain Jack's vortex manipulator, so we don't um, know that. at one point, a unit has had contact with that. So, but you don't know you don't know how capable they are of messing with these. These are the temporal guard manipulators. This is Gallifreyan technology that was that's been developed just recently, mm -hmm. recently. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of again a lot of variables. Yeah. Um, what you know about these things, um, where the sh where the water stops, is is that they could remove the sensor, but it would be challenging. The doctor is very familiar with Time Lord tech, obviously, um, and would probably know more. Okay. But it would be up to you <coughs> um, to dissect one of these things. Um, you you and I, like I said before, uh, Doctor, you've. You've never seen Time Lord technology like this. You've seen the Vortex manipulators, but they're using it in ways you've never seen the Time Vortex manipulated. Mm. So it might be a curiosity for you as well. They don't want the Vortex manipulation part, um, but perhaps we could both keep an eye on the proceedings? I like that. I just know these things are quite temperamental, yeah. you know, with all the... Well, yeah, they're connected to the time stuff, and that tends to not go that well if you happen to remember the last time you visited me. Um, yeah, sorry Roko, about that. Uh, <sighs> make a knowledge plus science roll. Mm -hmm. I just, I, you've seen this, you've used one of these before. Correct. I don't know if they have, I don't. Um, Unit has seen them before, um, but. How much you get? I believe, Sarah Jane, when she says they aren't going to try to mess with the actual time travel, okay. they don't I, have to bring I, down um, the, the TGs on 19 them. is great. <laughs> Right, but remember the last time you messed with these, you amplified yeah, your signal. These, these yeah. temporal, the, the, these vortex manipulators, they have also, you've witnessed, because you guys have encountered some of the same temporal guard over and over and over, and as somebody mm -hmm. who's familiar with biology, um, you've seen by the, this, these temporal manipulators, and you've noticed them as well in yourselves uh, over the time that y'all have used them. Nothing detrimental yet, and you probably... Keep an eye. Yeah, it basically, y it has a biological effect. Um, what? Yeah. Um, but I was going to tell you anytime. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the, here's the thing. You're not sure what it is. It may not be bad, but oh. but what you've noticed is like some of these time time lords. It's it's been difficult for you to lock down the right data here because of all the time manipulation that takes place. But you're not sure if you are. One thing you've noticed is it's possible that some of these Time Lords have aged a little bit using this, this technology. Um, mm -mm. There's some instability probably that comes from it, but you're not sure what the biological effects of it are just yet. It doesn't seem to have affected, physically it doesn't seem to have affected you two just yet. But there is also that bit of information. These things, yeah. ha you've noticed, you've noticed like every now and then when y'all use these things, You'll get dizzier and dizzier over the years. You've kind of I noticed a little that bit. Is. But it's always, yeah. Any, it's always any been, time I really was, I just thought the, it was hungover. But look, you, you guys are jumping, vor you're jumping through the time vortex. Yeah. So it's not, it's not like, oh my God, it's because. No. Yeah. I haven't found a gray hair on my head yet. No. So. no, no, no. <laughs> Alexanders have good genes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, nothing like that. But um, there is that aspect as well. You do know that they affect biology. You're just not, you just don't have enough data. Because you two have not been able to break these things open and analyze them. You've just been using them as tools to get around and do what you've got to do. Yeah, so. yeah. I'm an anthropologist. I'm not a... Yep. Damn it, Jim. <laughs> 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 yeah, so. Right. Sarah I will Jane probably says, distribute that information to the doctor. It might be necessary to open one of these before we go inside. If you're available, 
if you're, if you're willing to do it. It's just that the temporal guard, they have the ability to use these so easily. And we I don't know what I the risks are. I told I'd have a word with you. I didn't promise what you'd say. I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Yeah, I know, but... I, I think these are a very bad thing to use to protect little, little people. Do you have a better idea, though? Maybe if I had more data, but right now I, I don't. I we I might have to share our information with Unit here. It's, it's not... Well, I don't like sharing information with people who don't share it with me, but really it's... These aren't necessarily always the best, most stable way of interacting with the time vortex, and, and I wouldn't want it to hurt somebody. I wouldn't want it to hurt the, the sapling. Or the others! <laughs> Where are they, by the way? Did you guys just let them go? They were sent back to their place of residence per Rose's request. She was rather adamant, and I understand why. But we do have them under observation. I don't believe we will have a problem. Like I said, we have had them under observation for some time now. Yeah, well, they found them once. They were yeah. going to kill a whole crowd of people just to get them. It wasn't that hard we to have find their signal, Doctor. Well, that's why we've got to figure out how to hide them. I say we go ahead with it. Because... Roko. I know you, I know you don't do you like do it. it? Of, of course I don't want to do it. I think it's a bad idea to mess with technology that you don't fully understand. I don't even fully understand it. I, I know, but don't but you want to see inside of it? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. Yeah. You pulled that card. You know somebody's buttons. It's almost like we travel together. <laughs> it's almost like I will make her want to do it. Roko, <laughs> they're, they're just like... Shit. <laughs> them. Doctor, I, I don't think they should do it, but if you want to, that Sarah, could be interesting. Sarah Jane says, I think that would actually be perfect. And you see some of the members of unit look a little disapproving, but no one says anything, but Sarah, Sarah Jane says, if we can agree that this technology will not be taken by unit, but just used for the purposes of protecting and for the intelligence gathering of these temporal god, would that put you more at ease? And in return, Doctor, you will be the one that performs the procedure to open these temporal devices open to learn more about the sensor apparatus inside. Would that put you more at ease? Yeah. <laughs> go, 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 go. I just put that. Yeah. If it's you, Doctor, I trust you. And I trust Sarah Jane. Thank you, Doctor. Tell us what you need. Uh, yeah. And then I what tell them what I need. And then, <laughs> the doctor, <laughs> and then the doctor goes into what we like to call techno babble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, reverse the polarity of the vortex manipulation. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, can we be in the room though? What's that? Oh, we, oh, you yeah. do you know how many nasty oh. things it would take to drag <laughs> me away? Um, quick side note. I wanted you to do old, it. <laughs> Not you. The old. Um, I couldn't. Bad, well, I will say. Um, so. I'm an anthropologist. Idea. Yeah. So Are you your science? your your species, Roko, yeah, um, is technology level seven. So interstellar travel and investigations yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, time Lord technology is Time Lord level ten. Yeah. So ah. so if you futzed with this, you'd be you'd be at much less of a disadvantage, but you would also have been at risk if you tried to crack this thing open and, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, Let's see what those Gallifreyan. 
I was going to say quick side note, too. and I loved this, and I've, I've, I've tried to pull it off, but for people who want to play an engineer in the Star Trek RPG that came out like in 99 or 98 from Unicorn <laughs> Games, which has been out of print for like a decade and a half, they had a techno battle table you could roll on and just come up with words <laughs> so you could sound like you're an engineer. And I just, what? like, I have always thought that was brilliant. That, that is brilliant. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's what everyone so gets intimidated cool. about. Yeah, because when you play the doctor, I imagine it must be intimidating. You've got to come up with all of this Matt <laughs> Smith jargon, this, mm -hmm. this Tom Baker jargon where you're just like blurting this stuff out. Uh, but it is possible. Let me see which circuit's maintain the flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, so... Yeah, and you've already messed with mine once before, mm -hmm. so you're familiar with them. Didn't work so well, but... <laughs> you were led down oh, right. to the, the laboratories? Yeah, the amplification. What? You are all led down to the laboratories where they do this yeah. sort of thing? Um, the, okay, so what you would notice when you guys arrive in the laboratories, which is on floor whatever, because you're in unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you arrive on the floor of the laboratory, um, and this door slide open, um, this is clearly the heart of unit. Um, it's not the command center, but it's clearly... you. When this door opens, you see alien tech from all over the place that hasn't been implemented yet. Um, you do see a dismantled Cyberman who's been splayed out across one of the walls. It looks like it's taken several, several like, uh, like there are holes in the breastplate, like maybe it was shot and destroyed. Um, and... It looks like all of the biological components have been removed, so it's just okay, the Cyberman. Yeah, no, it's not like <laughs> a severed like, torso. So bleeding. <laughs> no, all the biological components have been removed, but you do see um, it has been splayed out across the wall and dissected. So there's just tech, technology and Cyberman tech. Um, but it is also behind cases, and each piece of this technology has been separated from the other one. And Doctor, you immediately recognize these devices on the side of every case that's inhibiting any possible any possible transmissions whatsoever from getting out. Um, but it's being kept locked in a back area where you see things are quarantined off in sort of like a separate room as you're walking through. So it's like looking through a glass wall into like uh, the quarantined area of technologies that are highly dangerous. Sounds like that's a pleasant unit, Yeah, it's a little, like, first of all, uh, I, I don't know, I like I'll, I'll leave it to you. Have you two ever encountered the Cybermen in your 11 years of jumping the galaxy? I'll leave Absolutely. it to you. Yeah. Okay, then yes. Okay, you see... I always thought that your arm was from, like, scavenged components from Cybermen. That would be a problem. Ha! <laughs> that would be... Yeah. Let me, let me put it this way. I thought I got my arm from the Resistance. That's what I... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's from the Resistance. If you got... Well, I don't know where it came yeah, no, from. No, 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 no. No, the Resistance is the one that helped you yeah, build yeah. that... If, if that had been Cybermen... So tell me. Did mm. the Resistance use no, Cybermen parts? No, Because okay. if they did, there's a, there's a high probability you'd be a Cyberman by now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's a good thing and, I'm not. In Star Trek <laughs> speak, it would be like, oh, Borg technology. I'll just equip that to my oh. eye. I'm sure I'll be fine. <laughs> um, uh, you just kept talking about upgrading last yeah. episode. And I was like, yeah. I... Side note, the <laughs> Borg were really inspired. Side note, the Borg were inspired by Cybermen. Really? Yes. That makes so much sense. In yeah, fact, the episode where the Borg were introduced is called Q-Who. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Q-Who. Because the writers of Star Trek are all Doctor Who fans. Of course. Of course. As they are. should be. So, anyway. Um, I oh, Star Trek. This turns fun. Yeah, uh, so when you guys I'm see that playing. Cyberman, there's this immediate, uh, that sort of acknowledgement that you are in uh, the presence of one of the most horrible creatures you've encountered. Um, that, that thing, even in, even in its death state, uh, it's like, it's, it sort of has the same, like in D&D, &D, when you see a dead dragon, it's still a dragon. It's dead, but holy hell. So it's still, when you see it, this Cyberman split up across the wall, because its head is intact. And it's, it's frightening to look at, that emotionless, cold, steel um, look. Those are even blastier than unit. Cool looking robot, though. <laughs> All no. those pieces. No, 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 Are they? No. Did, no. Do they make those here? <laughs> you think it's more dangerous than uh, that? Sarah James says, "Good God, no!" Promise me, if you ever see one of those, you'll um, run. All right. Been a so you're led. You're led into the room where you see it looks like a containment unit where you're able to do your work. Right. So everyone see. steps back and lets you have the room. <gasps> Most I give. So it's, I give the doctor okay, mine. Take it off. Hand it to the doctor. And doctor, you enter the room. Uh, cameras are on, so you can actually see what uh, the doctor is doing. Um, you are just in there with your sonic screwdriver. It looks Double. like. <laughs> um, so, okay, doctor. Um, we are going to need you to make a 
ingenuity technology roll. Up. And definitely get your bonus from this one. Yeah. yeah. Story points. So Please don't blow up everything. This is going to be yeah. difficult. It's 21. You need uh, a 21. I've got a base 13. So you're in good shape. Uh, you have, there's a chance, but you've, 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 you're in good shape. So it's difficulty 21. No, base 15. OK. Oh, you're in very good shape. Uh, so don't mess this up. Point? Oh, I think it's something you don't want to mess up. I think this is a pretty good moment to not blow everyone up. Yeah. yeah. Or tell everyone where we are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the other. <laughs> um, go ahead and get that story point back. Everyone has done some amazing role playing today, so I'm going to give everyone uh, two story points. Oh. Yay! So gain one back, Amy plus one. And uh, uh, yeah. Cool. And uh, go ahead and, and go ahead yeah, and make your roll. Nice yeah. game, I imagine. I'm going to spend mine on convincing Sarah mm -hmm. Jane to be not evil. Uh, <laughs> I'll spend them to get By the way, read. special thanks to the audience that's been very patient with me today. I am playing all of the most iconic doc characters in Doctor Who, <laughs> and it is not easy. I'm sure I'm not doing any of them justice, but it's a game, and so we're having fun, so whatever. How dare you have fun? Your fun, Your fun is, is wrong. wrong. Your fun <laughs> is wrong. Um, uh, all right, so go ahead. All right, I've spent the story point, so <laughs> I've got base 15, and... Make your roll. I'm sure you're going to blow it out. Nine. Did so you roll over 24. 21? Plus five, I'm at 29. 29, we may have you do fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, no, this is great. This is when you, you want You do so well, you basically learn everything you can learn about this. Um, Yay! As you pop this device open, first of all, um, the first thing you notice is, yes, it is definitely Time Lord in, in origin, just like you suspected. Um, they're using all of the technologies that they helped use build the TARDIS. Um, having said that, if somebody had tried to open this and dissect it itself, it's entirely possible that they would have shattered the vortex unit itself, which could have possibly caused a rupture in space-time and destroyed maybe half the planet. And it's a good thing I don't have insatiable curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> um, these two don't realize that they were probably walking around with time bombs. The other thing, the other thing, the other thing you um, you also notice is that. Um, the uh, these vortex manipulators are capable of warping space time around themselves. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, what the what these uh, what the TGs are probably using this for, and what probably makes them lethal in combat, is they're able to manipulate spatial energy around them to sort of enter bullet time, like in the Matrix, which makes them. But what you know from from looking at this technology, it's incredibly volatile to localize it to that fine of a point. Mm. So your guess is vortex manipulators have probably killed a few time uh, temporal guards. Yeah. But then hmm. they regenerate. So mm. what your guess is is that the people who are using these are zealots or crazy people. Willing to take their lives into their hands every yeah. single time they roll the on. dice. We but yeah. we that. kill everything <laughs> we need to kill. Um, the sensor unit is triangulated to detect time lord technology. And just from that role, that incredible role, you could in fact uh, generate a tech um, using uh, using this as a base point. You could possibly build something uh, that would be able to mute a Time Lord's uh, DNA signature. Fantastic. Um, there are pieces missing, though. You need you would need more time with this. Okay. Mm. Um, you I'd also love to while I'm looking at it. I'd love to know if there's any way that I can uh, like put something set my Sonic up to disrupt or impair, or like, I don't necessarily want to blow them up and create breaks yeah. in the space-time continuum, but, sort of but when we encounter people with them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's entirely possible uh, with story points expenditure and stuff like that. Um, I, I will say that in order to build the tech that you need to mute Time Lord signature and to build what you're suggesting, you're going to need at least a week. Oh, boy. <laughs> I've got Buffin. That helps. Yeah. Well. Um, and get only there was some kind of time Come machine. back next I week. Know. She'll be Sarah finished. Jane, Sarah, Jane says, <laughs> Sarah, Sarah Jane says, so what's terrible. the assessment, Doctor? I think we can do it. I think we can mute the signals. Great. These things are very we have to, dangerous. We have to do this tomorrow, so this is very fortunate that we have managed to pull this off. Tell us what you need from us. I'm afraid I need a bit more time. Uh... There's nobody. There's there's nobody in this room that had, that that has the level of intellect or technology uh, that you need to help you get this job done in the time span that you need it. I do know another time lord, though. I mean, he's half time lord. It's possible. Um, 
to bring it up. I mean, uh. It's certainly possible, yeah. I need, I need help to get this done. Uh, what kind of help? I wonder if we might reach back out to John. Sarah Jane just... There's no way. Rose has made it very clear. <laughs> I suppose we could ask. Um, and then you hear Mickey say, we could, we could let the asset help, ma'am. And you see Sarah Jane just this, this sort of haunted look over her face. And he says, ma'am, it's, you've already promised them and it's only a matter of time. If we've only got a, if we only have till tomorrow to do this for whatever the time frame we've built for it, maybe, maybe we just do it. And Sarah Jane looks, she says, God forgive me. What have you done? You should come with me. Close it. You close it up. You've never seen this look on her face before. All the looks you're familiar with, she looks... very grave with you. And she says, just the doctor. Just for now. No one else. But I want to know. You can tell them when you get back, but just you for now. All right. I'm going to hand you the vortex manipulator. She comes out and hands it to you. Okay. <laughs> um, Sarah Jane leads you to the elevator. Be careful with that thing. <laughs> and she presses a button. You Never. see her swipe her card and, and, and like put her eye into like a retina scanner. And um, the elevator begins to move. And she says, you have to promise me that you won't judge me. I don't like the sound of that. You're, you're not going to like this very much. But we have been placed in unusual circumstances. And we have to use every advantage that we have. And you know me, I wouldn't have done this unless it was absolutely necessary. And the elevator comes to a stop. And, it, and when it opens, you see a long hallway. And at the end, a pair of double doors. And she steps through and starts walking to the double doors. I, I'm guessing you're going to follow right, after follow. That. Okay, she approaches the double doors. And she stops in front of them. And then you hear a voice on the other side say, Enter. I know you're there. And she takes a deep breath and slides open the door. <laughs> and you see, Hello, Doctor. Davros. What? Sitting... 10 feet away, right there, plugged into technology and a desk in front of him, waiting for you, not surprised to see you at all. I am the asset. I can assist you. Sarah Jane Smith, what on earth has happened? She says, you have to understand that the time war took an effect that we didn't he came to us. We had no choice, Doctor. We had no choice. Don't look so sad, Doctor. We can work together. That's something I haven't heard before. It's something I've never done before. The Davros I've met was not a cooperative fellow. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Doctor, if, there, if there's anyone that can help you with that device in the time frame that we need it, it will be him. You said the Daleks had been destroyed. She looks caught and she says, they have. Davros is the only living member of their race. The Time Lords Doctor, I don't know what reality you're coming from, but in this one, the Time Lords are the enemy. 
And in this one, Davos, what do you want? They made a deal with me. They would let me stay alive if I helped. That doesn't answer my question. I want what everyone wants. To stay alive. Um, if you want to make an ingenuity, do you want to make a, <laughs> I'll let you make an ingenuity awareness check and actually have Davros' stats for you. <laughs> Jason Charles Miller, everybody. Hey! 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 One of oh. The <gasps> oh no, were you catching, did you guys yeah, miss all of that? Did the audience catch any of that? Yeah. Okay, good. Well, I'm, we're, I'm close enough to yours. Probably. Okay, good. Oh, thank so. goodness. <laughs> all right, so. That was such a good speech. Right? <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh -huh. Do it yeah. again. Jason Charles Miller. <laughs> took a class in Davros improv. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's one of the reasons. All right, so resolve and let's see. Ooh, nice. I just, like, okay. I think the master Skills. or Dawn. <laughs> so. It's the only two things I can think of. I, I wasn't thinking yet. it would be the master, but then he mentioned the master earlier, so I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone goes straight for the master. <laughs> um, okay, uh, you know what? Only at the I last the couple minutes I was starting though. to think yeah. maybe <laughs> You got the thing going. Ball. Okay, cool. I so. couldn't crack the code. I was thinking some action is there. Or next uh, we're, yeah, we're just about to wrap up. I knew it wouldn't be that because there's a... That's an episode. Yeah, that's an episode. So, Doctor, what was your role? That was the only uh, 19. You cannot read Davros to save your life. We do not know what this creature's intention is, but everything, the Emperor of the Daleks has always been one of the most lethal entities this universe or any universe has ever known. And hand thing. He always oh, does this. Yeah, he always does the hand <laughs> thing. <laughs> and here he is. And for all intents and purposes, it seems like he just wants to help. And that is where we're going to go. Oh, yeah. 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 No one wants to see that. Joining us Smile. next week, Jason Charles Miller, yes. Davros, <laughs> Emperor of the Daleks. Thanks for jumping in. Oh, yeah. Thanks wow. for jumping in this last second. I was wondering why you were lurking. Yeah, <laughs> you've been lurking yeah. around. Ready it wasn't to my normal there. just lurking. It was actually <laughs> lurking like with a purpose. It was like you were lurking with a purpose. Yeah. There's Mark <laughs> So Jason is old school, like hardcore. He's seen every single episode of Doctor Who from the original black and white first episode to the most recent. So oh, he's, yeah, well, that's, he's yeah. been hungry. I mean, it's been a while something. since I've seen the old ones, but they're, yeah. in, they're in here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it'll be sweet to have you on and playing our, our, our super mega villain turned ally. But yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So we're going to conclude today's game. Thank you so much, yeah! everybody. Thank you, Jason Charles Miller. Thank you uh, for jumping in. Real quick, before we before we fade out, uh, I want to thank uh, two things. I just want to thank you guys so much. We're on episode five of this <laughs> show, and and what was supposed to be just sort of like a casual RPG show, you guys have really turned this into something. Like the the love you guys have been showing us, and the love you've been throwing at uh, our wonderful cast and me and everything. And all the Whovian love we're getting out there, thank you so much for that. It's it's so much fun. I know we're saturated with RPG shows, but you guys have helped turn this one into something really special. And uh, I just want to also give all of my love and admiration. I'm going to get all emotional here. Um, to uh, to Sir John Hurt, who we lost, um, who played the uh, the War Doctor, and many 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 other roles. He was one of my favorites that has ever donned. Uh, I got to watch I got to watch John Hurt speak live at Gallifrey One, and it was such an incredible experience to listen to him talk about his experience with Doctor Who. Uh, so all of our love to John Hurt and all of our love to you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, yeah, I don't have yeah. visit Thursday yet, so I'm just gonna say have a great weekend, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, and we'll see y'all next time. Bye. 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 Bye.